Chapter 51, Chapter 51 1. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? As soon as I said I was the one that had sold them out, Team Avatar refused to go, looking at me with anger, Aang, in particular, was mostly confused, more so than angry, but wanted an explanation of how I knew of their plan and why I had stopped the. As for Sokka and Katara, their faces were scrunched up in anger. With a smile, I offer Wan Shi Tong a way to solve this, a duel of sorts for access to the library, if they won, he would allow them to check his books, if they lost, they would be forever banned, the ever pacifist spirit, was reluctant to accept, but knowing they would try and sneak inside regardless of what he said and that this would help me on my training, he accepted my idea, just for educational purposes, of course. You say you don't like violence, yet you are having us fight him, Aang pointed at me. If I win, you will forget about this library and never come back, I said before my feathery friend had the chance to answer. Aang glared at me, why are you doing this? All I want is to save the world. Regardless of your motives, the knowledge in here won't help you, I chuckled. You are from the Water Tribe, Sokka stated, holding his boomerang tight in anger, how can you do this? Haven't you lost someone you care about? Don't you want to stop this? Don't you know the pain people are going through? 7. Lost someone? Pain? What a naive little idiot. I know pain, more than you can possibly comprehend, I replied coldly. 14. The rules are simple if my representative wins, you four will be forbidden from entering my library, Wan Shi Tong said. As we entered my training room, the one room empty of anything valuable, you three can fight him at the same time, he has stated he has no problems in doing so. 5. Aang sighed, if this is the only way, I will do it. Fine by me, Katara hissed, look at that the little girl has some bite, perhaps this will be interesting. Traitor, Sokka muttered, getting into position. 2. Don't hold back, or I am going to break you guys. I winked at them, deciding not to use my bending at full unless it was absolutely necessary, meaning I would only be using seismic sense and water sense this battle. 3. Don't worry, never intended to, Sokka snarled at me, and at that, I started to chuckle. 1. I was talking to Katara and Aang, you don't have anything to hold back, I smirked at him. 21. Sokka growled and was ready to attack, but I stopped him with a passive gesture of my hand as I walked towards Wan Shi Tong. You said you played various musical instruments, right? The owl nodded, with a confused expression blossoming on his face, all right, play something I can tap my foot to while I kick them out of the library, I said with a winning smile. 2. All right. Wan Shi Tong chuckled, pulling something reminiscent of a guitar out of his feathers, I will set up the mood for you. 12. As soon as the spirit started to play his music, I turned to the Aang gang, with a smile now, where were we? And with a quick flick of my hand, I invited them to start this fight. Come on. 4. Sokka was the first one to rush at me, throwing his boomerang at me, which I caught without any problems. From behind, I sensed Katara trying to water whip me, but I swiftly move out of the way while throwing the boomerang I had caught at her. The boomerang hit her on the head, throwing her to the ground, unconscious. 8. This attack had two motives. 1. You always take the healer first. 2. It was the easiest way to enrage Aang. Aang immediately rushed at me, and so did Sokka, with a smile and feeling their attacks before they even managed to do them. I sidestepped to the right just enough to dodge the sloppy assault of punches Sokka was trying to deliver. You seriously need some training, I chuckled, as I swiftly punched Sokka in the solar plexus, knocking the wind out of the undertrained water tribe soldier, bringing him down to his knees, good night, I said as I added a quick kick to his jaw knocking him out. Aang, by this point, was behind me throwing gusts of wind at me, completely forgetting about his pacifist persona, he just wanted to beat me up, strong attacks, but you are getting sloppy, force without skill is meaningless. I commented as I dodged his assault while walking towards him. 7. Aang said nothing and tried to sweep me off my feet with a gust of wind on the ground, but this didn't work, for I had jumped out of the way a few seconds before he even tried to do such a thing, and now I was in front of him, with a smile and a quick blow to his face Aang was wide open and begging for another attack and well I obliged him, putting a knee into the young avatar's stomach, doubling him over. Once again, he was wide open, so I followed that up with a quick rising uppercut to his chin, knocking him out. 2. Well, 
That was easy, I chuckled, but before I was able to fully enjoy my victory, I felt a powerful surge of spiritual energy behind me, twirling around, I saw not Aang but the manifestation of his anger, the avatar state, his eyes, and arrow tattoos glowing white, and from his body anger almost as strong as the one I had felt on Vado emanating like a broken dam. 12. Ha ha ha, now this is fun. I laughed, getting a tingling sensation on my spine that I couldn't really tell what was it. Show me what you can do with hundreds of years of experience, try and defeat me. Things had certainly turned interesting in the last few seconds. 15. Comment. 92 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 52. Chapter 52. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? Aang cried in anger, many voices coming out of him shaking the ground around him, before he lunged forward, quickly flying towards me with a wind-like spear around him, his eyes glowing white, his face reeking of anger, promising a lot of pain for me should I fail to win, then midway, he moved his left hand in a swift and precise motion to the right. This action was followed by a hundred rocks flying my way. Still, reflex kicked in, and I created a wall of solid ice, shielding me from his earthbending attack, while I tried to cleave his legs with a sharp water blade. Aang noticed this in time and stopped my attack with a powerful gust of wind. Aang growled once again as he gathered water around him, molding it into a water-like drill. Once this water attack was fully formed, he dashed at me, breaking the earth on his path. I knew this time he was going too fast for me to avoid, so I just stood there, creating water attack of my own to block his. Soon enough, our attacks clashed, creating a rumbling echo through the room. He was the avatar all right, any other waterbender would be dead trying to block this, but not me. When it came to waterbending, I had more experience and power than him, and I could notice that much. His air attacks on the avatar state were lethal, but when it came to the other elements he had yet to master they lacked something. Not bad, I commented with a small smile, as I noticed how the weight of my own water bending attacks were dragging the avatar state powered Aang down, it seems you can't fully draw from the past avatar's experiences when you enter that state unconsciously, good to know, I chuckled pushing him a few meters back with a wave of water, but with a small tornado to break my attack he soon recovered and pushed back hard, this time mostly using air bending attacks, which were exponentially stronger than his earth and water bending ones. By a big margin. I had to admit, he was strong, very strong, leaving me no more option but start dodging his attacks while I attempted to pierce his arms and legs with a barrage of compressed water bullets, but these proved useless, against his wind-like sphere, that destroyed my commonly lethal projectiles into nothingness before they even managed to hit him. Aang cried in many voices, throwing a violent gust of wind my way too wide to dodge, so I stood firm, creating a dome of water and ice around me that proved most useless as his attack broke my defenses and trashed me to the wall of the room, dislocating my arm. Shit. I snarled, jumping back to recover while covering my arm in chi-infused water to heal it. Days like this I love I learned how to heal. I continued to fight him while I healed my arm, which, thanks to my intensive training in the spiritual arts with Wan Shi Tong, took less than a minute. With a smile, I dashed forward, dodging his attacks while slowly infiltrating water on his wind sphere, for it was impossible to make a perfect defense, it took me a while, but when I had enough water, I molded said water into a hand and grabbed his head pushing it down to the ground with great force. I then snapped my fingers, gathering all the water around, creating hundreds of water balls that I threw at him before he recovered. Blood splattered everywhere. Did you win? Wan Shi Tong inquired. Not even close, I shook my head off, all my coordination was barely enough to break his nose and give him some minor cuts, he was still fully functional. Aang stood up, his eyes still shining white with some blood coming out his mouth, his eyes staring at me with a deadly cold glare. Fuck I inwardly cursed before he created another wild-like sphere around him, and with a battle cry, he darted at me throwing several gusts of wind, that like before too wide to dodge and too strong to block. The attacks pushed me to the wall with such strength that I felt several bones broke upon the impact of each gust of wing, once his relentless assault was done. I stood up, covering at least an 80% of my body in healing water. Fuck, you really got me there. I said, panting, it seemed only using water bending against him was a poor choice, one that I will rectify right now, whatever. 
I guess now's as good a time as any to let the world know, I smiled, I really wanted to save the fact there was another avatar for another time, enough holding back. I chuckled. My merge with Vado was very different that the merging and Rava had, for one, I wasn't going to reincarnate, Vado extended my lifespan, and for two, I had access to the dark avatar state, since the day we merged, I didn't like to use it thought, the emotions were too strong, changing me into a real monster, at least in mindset. But right now, I didn't have much of a choice. Time to let my monster come out and play, time to even the field a bit. My body started to glow in a dark red dim light, with my eyes shining crimson red, well, if I were you, I would try to win because as soon as my body recovers, I will show you a world of pain, brat, Aang stood immobile, his spiritual energy switching from anger to confusion as if he didn't believe what he was seeing, which gave me more than enough time to heal my very broken body. Wow, you are very stupid, lesson number one of combat, don't let the enemy sense Sabine himself, that's like the most important rule, I chuckled, as I basically teleported behind him, bending the water in my body to fly and move too fast for him to even see, realizing the battle was still on, the stunned avatar staggered back, not knowing where I had gone, until he bumped me and turned around just to receive a water explosion with enough strength to bring him to his knees, if you were in control of your actions, this would be challenge, but alas, you are not, rage can only take you so far, I commented, kneeling down to so that I could make eye contact with him, growling, he stood up, trying to attack me, but he was too slow, and I trapped his legs between two boulders with earth bending while slamming his head with another water explosion, Aang fell harshly, crashing against the ground. I would use fire, but I promised I wouldn't I also didn't want to kill him. Aang roared once again, throwing the most powerful gust of wind so far that I managed to block, but even then, it managed to push me back a bit, with a smile I immediately recoiled, with a powerful blow of water myself, the blow itself propelled him against the wall, breaking a few of his bones. Staggering, he tried to stand up, but his avatar state receded, and he fell down, blood flowing from his broken body. He was done, but I wasn't, with a wicked smile, I created several ice lances around, ready to paint the room with his blood. Enough. Wan Shi Tong said in a pleading tone, you are letting the power control you. Blinking in shock and realization, I melted the ice lances and dropped to the ground, undoing my avatar state, realizing that if it wasn't for Wan Shi Tong, I would have ended Aang without hesitation, it was now clear, I needed to train more, otherwise, I would one day do something I might regret. I apologize, Wan, I sighed with my hands shaking, I could still feel the need to kill him vibrating in my body, I let the power take away my control. Comment. 78 Comments. Vote. 1 Left. Chapter 53. Chapter 53. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? 1. Laying cold and unmoving on the floor, rested team avatar, while my whole body trembled in shock. Not because I had been close to killing them, but because I had been very close to losing control, and it felt good, very good. 2. The feeling of overwhelming power coursing to my every fiber intoxicated my mind, with a rush of pleasure, enough to drive any man insane. I had no idea things would play out like that. The first time I entered this avatar state was after the fusion, it was part of it, I hadn't used it, I knew how to use it, but I hadn't had the need to use it. Until today, I was confident if push came to shove, I would be able to control myself, mostly because I hadn't had any problems keeping Vado and his emotions at bay, but this was totally different. Well, I ain't ready to use that. I repeated once more with a sigh as I healed Aang. 1. Your avatar state is vastly different to Rava's, Wan Shi Tong stated, how they differ it's a mystery, but they feel completely different. Well, whatever it was, I had to learn how to control it, if I was to kill people, I wanted to be completely conscious, not high, or mad with power. The idea of not being in control of my actions sickened me, and it was something I was not going to allow, but at the very least, this slip of control would keep Aang out of my way, I knew that much. After all, people should either be loved or crushed. For if you do them minor damage, they will get their revenge, but if you cripple them emotionally or physically, there is nothing they can do. So I knew that if I ever needed to injure someone, I would do it in such a way that I would not have to fear their vengeance. And I had crushed him. Aang. Katara muttered as she stood up, 
rubbing her head in pain where the boomerang I had thrown hit her, Aang. She shouted as soon as she saw his broken body. Don't disrupt me, I said, as I restrained her body with water. You can't heal him, you lack the skill to do so, I sighed, he'll be fine. Anger, hate, fear, every emotion close to that spectrum was emanating from her. She hated me, the funny thing is that her hatred made me feel at home. It reminded me of my time in the Northern Water Tribe. He came close to killing me, you know. I chuckled, he was very close to ending my life, I just retaliated in kind. Aang would never lower himself to your level, Katara spat. I hummed, maybe not consciously, but when the boy goes to sleep, and the beast comes to play, all rules and morals are gone. The avatar state, Katara muttered in shock. Yep, I chuckled, he broke half of my body, it hurt like a bitch. Regardless of what he did, he doesn't deserve what you did, Katara hissed. 3. Maybe, but if you think the Fire Lord will be more gentle, then this war is already lost for you, maybe I went a bit overboard, but fuck you, Katara, if it weren't for me going Avatar on him, I would have died. This is M I had finally had enough and silenced Katara with a piece of ice covering her mouth. 2. She is rather annoying, Wan Shi Tong commented. 12. Yes, I nodded with a chuckle. How long do you think it will take you to heal him? The owl inquired as he inspected Aang on the floor. An hour or two, I answered, I could speed the process to minutes using that power, but I'm not exactly comfortable using it. Wise, it's best, at least for now, Wan Shi Tong agreed. After healing Aang completely, I helped Wan Shi Tong carry them out, with Katara still on her ice binds, to stop the temperamental teenage girl from doing something stupid. 4. There you go, be free. I commented, putting her in the ground. 3. Who the heck is he? Toph inquired, jumping into a fighting position, but by her stance, it was clear she couldn't see me well, probably because of all the sand. 6. He is the one that almost killed Aang, Katara spat. I am, I nodded. Without skipping a beat, Toph attacked me with a wide attack of sand that I dodged with ease, we don't have to fight, not anymore. I sighed. Well, maybe you don't, but I do. Toph said, continuing her sloppy assault of attacks that, thanks to her messed up seismic sense on this uneven terrain, were pretty easy to avoid. Enough. Wan Shi Tong growled, until today, my library was at peace, but every time humans come, they ruin my peace, his eyes glowed at that, I will sink my library back to the spirit world, are you coming? He added while looking at me. One. Yes, I nodded, jumping back to the library. Aang POV. At first I was angry at him, then I rationalized this anger was unbecoming of me, why did his presence annoy me so much? And why did this feeling of anger didn't feel like it was mine, it felt like someone was feeling it for me. It felt forced, whoever this guy was, he wasn't worse than Oze, and yet I disliked him more than Oze for no apparent reason. 8. Then, when I was hesitating, he gave me a reason to hate him, he hit Katara, knocking her down. 10. And now I wanted to beat him. For the first time in my life I wanted to beat someone up, but even then, something, like a whisper was begging me to kill him but I didn't have the heart to kill anyone, life was precious no matter what, no matter how much I hated him right now, though it seemed my anger meant nothing to him, for like Sokka and Katara he defeated me rather swiftly, but before I blacked out, something forcibly pushed me back, like taking control of my body, while putting me in the back seat. 6. Unlike the previous times I had entered the Avatar state, this one felt like my emotions for him, forced. And I knew I was going to kill him no matter what I wanted. Or so I thought. The next thing I know, the library is gone and I'm on top of Appa. And while I had no proof or recollection of what happened after I was knocked out, I knew for some reason I had lost. 1. Who was that guy? I muttered, deep in thought. 15. Comment. 85 comments. Vote. One left. Chapter 54. Chapter 54. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? I continued my studies under Wan Shi Tong while looking for a way to control my power without losing my sanity. There is no point in being strong if you can't control yourself. 3. But I also had other things in mind, what to do after I finished my training, one day. I would be done. And then what? Was that all my life would be? I wanted a goal something beyond being strong. But I just didn't know what I really wanted besides being strong, beyond strength, 
I didn't know who I really was. 7. Long time no see, Vado whispered inside my head, stopping my train of thought abruptly, I see you humiliated Rava, how delightful. Vado, I thought you were asleep, I inwardly muttered. I was, I can't always be conscious, apparently this merging makes me lethargic, Vado stated with a bored tone, and I wouldn't have woke up if it weren't for you, you woke me up. I did. I inquired. The avatar state as you call it, taps into my power, Vado clarified, while you can bend the four elements without tapping into my power, you have to use my essence to enter the avatar state, therefore, you woke me up. I didn't have to use his power to bend all four elements? Sorry, but I didn't understand the part where you said I don't need you to bend all the elements. 1. Vado sighed, I didn't say you didn't need me, mortal, I said you didn't use my power, when bending the elements, you use me as a conduit of sorts, you don't use my spiritual power, you use yours, but when entering the avatar state, you use both of our spirits at the same time. I see, I muttered. Though, I didn't have anything to do with that delightful bloodlust you were exhibiting, it was delightful, Vado whispered as if I was going to believe him that. 3. We both know you try to mold my thoughts and urges to your liking, I replied plainly. Oh, I do. I have no need to lie, but that show you gave Rava was all you, Vado laughed, my power just enhanced what you already had. I didn't give you any more. Well, this is taking me nowhere, well, regardless if you are right or not. I'm trying to, study, I sighed, and find a goal, right. Vado snickered. At least, I have the intention of finding other goals. I chuckled bitterly, you only think about ending Rava, how sad is that your life revolves around her, one might say you love her. 16. Don't you dare to say I love her, Vado exploded with anger. 33. Alright, I shrugged, but tell me one goal that doesn't involve her. I, I, Vado growled, fine, then, how about we find a goal to accomplish together, one that doesn't involve Rava, at least directly. He offered, we are stuck together anyways so, it should be at the very least educational. 8. I hummed, very well, I have nothing to lose, yes, yes you do, Akira, your sanity, and, well, that's about it. 2. Perfect. Vado growled, how about we kill all humans, bringing total damnation to this world? 8. Seriously. I, I had no words for that offer. Like if you are going to try and corrupt me, be more subtle, Jesus fucking Christ. 4. It was a comedic comment, in your mind, you call it, chaotic humor. I thought it was fit for me to try such a thing and see, Vado muttered, with a tone, dare I say disappointed I didn't laugh. 2. Well, to be fair. I didn't expect you to tell a joke, not even one in bad taste, I replied, with a sigh, but it was funny, now that I know it was a joke. Very well, Vado sighed, how about? Huh, you are right, this is hard. Huh, told you, I chuckled. You know, it's impressive how calm you are with the fact that I want to corrupt you. Vado laughed, perhaps you are like me. A creature of chaos. 2. I don't gain shit by worrying right now, I sighed, and, well. I consider myself chaotic neutral, alignment wise. 3. Oh yeah, I saw a game in your mind that uses that terminology. Vado commented. DND, I smiled with a surge of happiness, remembering one of the games I had grown up with as a child. 17. That's the one. Vado yawned, anyway. I have to go, gr I hate this, I never had to sleep before this, it's becoming anno. 5. And like he had come, he was gone, my mind felt empty of his presence once again. Youthful fire bear? POV. 8. My destined rival had disappeared, but I knew it was against his will, there was no other way he would go back on his word of fighting me? 9. And so, I waited, roaming the spirit lands with one mission at hand, finding him. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months. Until, I felt something. His presence, my rival was near. I could already taste our battle? I am on my way. 18. Akira POV. As I was reading the arts of peace and mind, I felt something. Something familiar. Oh no, that bear was coming, shit I had forgotten about my dual promise, and now that I am in the spirit world he will surely come for me. 2. Well, hello there, that voice, I knew who it was, Cheshire, good to see you back here, the cat purred, his head and body going separated ways, do you know there is an, peculiar bear coming down this way, burning everything on its path, while repeatedly shouting, challenge. 7. 
I had a feeling. I groaned. One. Oh ho ho ho, how delightful. The cat smiled in joy as he materialized some popcorn out of thin air. This will be very entertaining. Three. Fine, let me stop him, before he burns down the library. I sighed as if summoned. One immediately teleported in front of me. No one, it's going to burn anything here? Do what you must, but protect my tomes, the owl stated. What about your non-violence policy? I chuckled. Every policy has a loophole, Wan Shi Tong said. Now go and murder that bear. 13. Wow, you went from zero to a hundred real quick. I chuckled, as I walked out of the library to fight the bear like I had promised. 9. Comment. 62 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 55. Chapter 55. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? Defeating the Ursoc, the fire bear, was somewhat easy, though we destroyed part of the forest, close to the library. He had a lot of spirit no pun intended. After his defeat, the bear decided to stay by my side so that he could have a rematch, while I learned and practiced how to control my avatar state, or how I called it, my assault mode. It feels better, considering how bloodthirsty I get with it. 14. Are you okay? Cheshire inquired, worried that I was shaking. What a stupid question, am I okay? Ha. Huh. It takes every ounce of my willpower and more to keep my mind in check. It's like fighting your instincts, you can't do it without suffering. It's deeply upsetting. But I wasn't going to let my power control me. I was the captain of my fucking body. If I wanted to kill, I would do it with a calm mind, not because... Every time I used the avatar state, or as I call it, my assault mode, the feeling, the need to destroy would get stronger, more intoxicating. 6. Meaning, whatever that was going on inside of me with that power, was only growing stronger, which left me with little to no choices in the training matter. If I wanted to get a hand of it, I would have to force myself into the state for long periods of time. In theory, after extended periods of time, my body and mind should acclimate it to the state that or kill me, one of the two, five, but for me to do that, I had to be alone, without anyone close to kill, otherwise, it would be impossible to get anything from that training, in short, I had to get the fuck out of the spirit realm and find a very secluded spot, well, it seems I am going to the southern water tribe, the most secluded and unimportant place on the avatar world, four, all right, I sighed while rubbing my forehead, I'm leaving, back to the human world, Wan Shi Tong inquired, closing a book he was reading for the hundredth time. I looked up to him and nodded, yes, I need to be in a calm environment so that I don't go on a murderous rampage. I see, the owl sighed. Wait, you were about to kill us. Ursok inquired, getting a nod from an answer, neat. 10. What the fuck is wrong with that bear, anyway, do you have the scrolls, the copies I asked you? A few weeks ago, I had asked Juan to make copies for all the airbending, earthbending, and firebending scrolls in the library. 1. I did, Wan Shi Tong nodded, giving me the scrolls in a six-foot-tall wooden box that weighed around 100 pounds. Maybe I should have selected fewer scrolls. Well, my friend, I hope we can see each other soon, Wan Shi Tong smiled, opening a portal, this should drop you where the library was before, be careful. 1. He is a magnet for problems, Cheshire purred but he is somehow more dangerous than the things that chase him. He'll be okay. 4. I will go with you. Bernard stated. 7. Didn't you hear what I said? I need to be alone. I sighed. This bear only had one thing in mind, and that was fighting me. I won't be close during training, but it has just occurred to me that you need me, Bernard said, and I raised an eyebrow at that. If you lose control and direct your attention to those of fairer means, no one would be able to stop you. He chuckled. Not that I can stop you, but I can keep your attention occupied in me, so that way you don't end killing innocent people. I blinked in surprise, in part, he was right, there wasn't anything stopping me from going to a nearby town if I let my bloodlust take over, but if that happens, I could end up killing you, I stated. I know, Ursok smiled. And you are okay with that? I asked. I am, that's what rivals do. Ursok said with a slight smirk, besides, I get to see the human world, 2 in 1. 11. Very well, I sighed. 2. Katara POV. Every night I would wake up trembling in fear, remembering how badly hurt Aang was, when I woke up after the duel, his body broken and shattered, his blood coating the cold marble floor, 
and the eyes of that man. He said he was helping Aang, but I could see on his eyes, he wanted to kill him more than anything. It was like staring at the jaws of death, to the dark abyss where monsters laid. It scared me, more than I cared to admit, knowing that not even Aang was able to defeat him, terrified me. If that monster ever wanted to hurt my family, my brother, Aang, I wouldn't be able to stop him. 8. Are you okay Katara? Aang quaked in worry. I'm fine, just thinking what are we going to eat tomorrow. I lied, I didn't want to worry him. He already had one big task on his shoulders, defeating Oze. He was already too young to fight a monster like the Fire Lord. I didn't want to burden him with a second one. 1. It's okay, cats. Sokka smiled, sounding fragile. We will make by as we have always done. He knew, he knew I was afraid. 1. Yeah, I cried, as a worried and confused Aang hugged me, trying to soothe my worries away. Everything is going to be okay, Katara, Aang stated, so confident it made me for a brief second forget about everything, I will make things right. 2. I know you will, I chuckled, but I knew I was only lying to myself, that monster was perhaps worse than Oze, I couldn't really know until I met the Fire Lord myself, but I have never seen such a terrifying gaze before something so devoid of emotion, I had to ask myself, was it even human? 20. Comment. 72 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 56, Chapter 56 5. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? 2. From the harsh deserts of S.I. Wong, to the cold wasteland of the south, my journey would take time, and with two spirit companions, things ought to be fun. Yes, too, C. Cheshire decided it was time to check the human world, he was curious, as a cat should be. 4. Though I knew he wanted to help, in his own messy chaotic way, so I accepted. Though it really made me wonder, why and how they got so attached to me, it was vexing. But at the same time relaxing, their emotions were always positive, at least regarding me. No hate, no anger. They were my break from the shit I usually have to filter. And for that I was grateful. I wasn't going to tell them though, Ursok is already too attached as he is, and Cheshire, he is too crazy. 4. I will burn the snow of the south, with my power. Ursok shouted. 6. Sometimes, you are unbearable, Cheshire chuckled. 21. Oh yeah, Cheshire was a pun fanatic, which at first was fun, not it was like walking with a washed up comedian, a catastrophe no pun intended. Maybe he is affecting me more than I had anticipated. Oh well, there are certainly worse things to learn than the art of puns. 10. We should arrive to the south in around two months, I commented, while reading the map, we still had a lot of land to cover, but it was mostly neutral land, with all the stops being unimportant for the Fire Nation, and therefore left alone. 1. Ursok looked at me, his ears twitched with excitement as his red-colored fur, bursted into flames, in two months I shall defeat the South. Our battle will be legendary. 5. You said that about breakfast, Cheshire deadpanned. And lunch, I added with a grin. And let's not forget about. Cheshire shuddered, when you went to the bathroom. 7. I know. Ursok laughed, life is a challenge, I intend to win. 10. That, that was surprisingly wise for a bear whose entire brain is designed for battle, I suppose that is true, I commented. Please don't be wise, Cheshire chuckled, it disturbs me when you are wise. 3. Though, in retrospective, Ursok probably meant life was a challenge literally, like he wanted to beat life, physically not emotionally, but when he's right, he's right. 2. Alright, I think it's best we camp, out of B.A. Singh Esi, before we embark any further, I stated. Our duties. Cheshire asked, exploding into confetti that said, what can I do? You are the fastest, so look around and find a good spot to sleep, I said. Cheshire raised an eyebrow at that, and with a smirk commented, I am a cat, are you sure this is the best task for me, you do know we sleep anywhere. I do, I rolled my eyes at him, but I also know you love sleeping close to water, and with a good supply close, and that's just what we need, I winked. Clever little human, Cheshire smiled, before vanishing out of sight. 1. What is my challenge? Ursok asked eagerly. Well, you find some wood, and bring it here, and please don't burn anything, including the wood, I chuckled. 1. Ursok smiled, his eyes twinkled with excitement, I will win this. And with that, he ran to the closest tree, while shouting, face my might wood. 
17. As for me, I had another thing to do, eat at a restaurant. God knows I miss fine dining. What can I say? I got spoiled in the Northern Water Tribe, which makes me wonder, what is you doing right now? I want to visit her, and Sakura. 5. But, I doubt they will recognize me, or welcome me. I am sure that by now, most people know about the mysterious man that almost killed the Avatar. And if they don't, they are never going to believe I am me, new face and shit. 10. And even if they did, believe me, and knew about me beating Aang, would they accept what I was right now, the natural enemy of their supposed savior? Or would they only two people I care about in the tribe shun me? I wasn't going to admit it, but if that happened, it would break a little part of me. You was like my sister, and Sakura, like an aunt. The only two people I care about in this world, at least as of now. 3. For the love of. You worry too much Vado growled, startling me, human relationships are a waste of time. 1. For the most part, yeah, I chuckled, but you can't help it, as much as you try to avoid it, you start to care. Truly disgusting Vado sneered, if they don't accept you, for what you became, they are weak, those who run from those with power, are nothing but stepping stones to our throne was Vado trying to comfort me, huh, well fudge me sideways. 7. I would have never guessed you had a soft side, I remarked. 1. I will pretend, I didn't hear such a stupid comment Vado hissed. 1. All right, be my guest Sundara, I laughed. I am not. How dare you? Compare me with that disgusting piece of media you consumed in your past life. I will go back to sleep. I will not stand here, and let a child insult me in such a way, Vado yelled. 15. All right, but in all seriousness, I chuckled, thanks. Dash, you welcome. Human and with that, I felt Vado go back to his slumber. Maybe this merging with him wasn't so bad, without his obsession with Rava, he was a pretty interesting being. 17. Halt in the name of Dash the poor guard that had caught me red-handed climbing the wall, was knocked out with a quick rock attack to his nuts, rendering him catatonic with a single attack. My, balls, why? The man squeaked in a high-pitched tone. 39. I honestly felt bad for the guy, but it was the only way to avoid him seeing me, and enter the city without getting the entire army chasing me. 5. But I knew that statement was a lie, for I had forgotten to use seismic sense and water sense to scout the area, and was left with no other choice. 1. Comment. 64 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 57. Chapter 57. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? 1. Training on the South Pole was relaxing. Without people or spirits to bother me besides Cheshire and Ursoc that would annoy me every now and then, things were going well for me. 1. The cold and harsh environment of the South, relaxed me. It was soothing, who would have known I would grow to love this seemingly unlike climate. I felt like home at it. 6. But enough about stupid sentimentalism, I was here to train, not to reminisce about how much I like the cold, and snow, which brought me back to square one, my training while going well, was, not progressing as I wanted it. The avatar state was in simple terms a human, aka me, using all the spiritual chakras, thought chakra, that dealt with the pure energy of the cosmos, which was blocked by earthly attachments. The water chakra, that dealt with the pleasure of the body and mind, which was blocked by guilt. 1. The fire chakra that dealt with the willpower, blocked by guilt. 6. The air chakra that dealt with love and was blocked by grief. The sound chakra, that dealt with the truth blocked by lies. The light chakra that dealt with the insight of all things, blocked by illusion. And last but no least, the earth chakra that dealt with survival, blocked by fear. 4. According to Wan Shi Tong, I had three pathways blocked, which was the reason I had little power over my emotions over my avatar state. 9. The sound chakra, the air chakra, and the thought chakra, which was surprisingly not what I had expected, I would have least thought the light chakra would be blocked considering I had the incarnation of chaos and darkness within me. According to the scrolls Wan had given me, if I faced and unlocked those chakras, I would have absolute control not only over my power but my empathetic condition. Lies, grief and earthly attachments, were apparently my problems. The thing was, I didn't know what lies I had been telling myself. Or what was if I even had a reason for grieving. I kinda understood the earthly attachments thing. I was a human, I had earthly attachments, no one can't say they don't. 
But the other two, I didn't understand. Two. How is the meditation going? Cheshire purred, poofing into existence, in my lap. I, I, well, it's not going bad. I answered with a sigh, but not well either. Cheshire sighed. Maybe I just need something to do. I've been focusing on training all my life, since I got here. Maybe I just need to focus on something else, and leave this shit for later. Like what? Cheshire hummed. 5. Like what? The $1 million question. When I got here my goals were clear, become strong enough to avoid all the dangers this word had to offer. Now that I was, I had nothing. Besides looking like Sinbad, and being the edgy version of the Avatar. 4. I don't know. Perhaps I could go back to the north, and see how things go from there. I did miss you and Sakura, heck after the spirits I even missed Paku, but I will take some vacations, I chuckled. 3. Well, they do say a rested mind is the key to success, Cheshire nodded in agreement. UPOV. I missed him every day, perhaps Sakura was right. Perhaps I did feel something for him more than friendship. But regardless of my feelings, I wanted him here, where I could talk to him, bother him and train with him. Why did he had want to explore the world? I sighed. 6. Wow, when I made the comment about you crushing on him. I did not expect this, Sakura chuckled. I don't think I like him that way, I wasn't even sure anymore. I would only know for sure if I saw him again. Maybe you don't, Bug hey I'm not saying you love him, but every girl needs a boy toy to release some tension, if you catch my drift and Akira is the only boy you ever showed mild interest with. Sakura winked at me. 9. Oh for the love of. I blushed at the idea. I am a princess. A piece of advice, princess, have some fun before tying the knot. Sakura rolled her eyes at me. Or do you think men actually go untouched to the holy unity of marriage? 10. I am done for the day. I said trying to sound angry, as I left the inn, but I couldn't. The idea of me, and, oh why am I even thinking about it? Get a grip of yourself you. 7. Akira POV. 1. Now that I had decided to visit the north, which in retrospective made my trip to the south entirely useless, I had yet again to make another plan of travel, which made me realize. I needed a faster way of traveling. What I made in a month. Aang, and any other character made in a week. We need to find some kind of mount, a flying one, big enough for the three of us, I hummed trying to think where I could find one. 2. Do whales fly? Ursok inquired, to which I ignored, I was not going to dignify that with an answer. 9. You seriously lack in anything that is not fight-related. Chisire on the other hand, could not hold back, if you need to fly. I'll take us there, for a price of course. You fit in my lap, how would you? You can change your size can you? I was going to kill the cat if he said yes. He could have saved me weeks of travel to begin with. Yes, I can not only alter my size but. I can shapeshift, so yet. Yeah, it would not be a problem for me, Cheshire answered. 5. Why didn't you tell me that before? I basically growled. You never asked. The cat shrugged, and I thought part of your spiritual training was the journey of getting here, so I didn't want to interfere. Ursok. I smiled. No. Cheshire gulped. 1. Cheshire said he wanted to. I chuckled evilly. No no no. Cheshire started to panic. 5. He wanted to fight you, I finished completing my evil revenge. 3. Let us fight. As soon as I said that, Ursok jumped at Cheshire. 20. Comment. 60 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 58. Chapter 58. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? The ride to the north was smooth, the silky hair of Cheshire against my skin made for the perfect bed that accompanied by the night wind that was pleasantly cool tonight. It was perfect. From above Cheshire I could see the sea, and more, the waves of the water moving side to side, up and down. A beautiful sight to behold. While I admired the view from above, Ursok was, in the meantime, talking about how many people he would challenge. And things like that, showing he still had his one-track battle-lusted fueled mind. You think the humans will recognize you? Ursok inquired, taking a break for his battle talk. How odd. I don't know, I sighed, but I sure hope you and Sakura do, if the rest don't it would be a plus. I chuckled. Oh yeah, the humans that shunned you for being the strongest. Ursok growled, I shall burn then to the ground. Haha, <laughs> no need to, I waved his idea off, but thanks, the sentiment is nice, 
I could tell that much, he was actually mad I was shunned, I could feel it on his emotions. Very well, Ursok pouted. I wanna meet that lady, the one that cooks like a goddess, Cheshire added, drooling at the idea. You will, you will, I answered. The next day we arrived at the tribe. It was around noon, when we got to the moonlight inn, the streets around as always, were so busy that, at first, I didn't notice Sakura had changed the outside decoration of the inn. Opening the door, I walked inside with Ursok and Cheshire by my side, like always Sakura was serving tables with a happy smile. Seeing her brought a sense of nostalgia I didn't know I even had, for without noticing and thinking I rushed at her, hugging her. Emom. Sakura said looking around, who are you? I missed so much you crazy lady, I chuckled, as I let her go, just now remembering I had a new face, so I had to make her remember. Fuck Paco, Akira. Sakura gasped after I said that, how, why, and can whoever made you a new face make me younger? She added with a smile. Really that's all it takes for you to recognize me, I chuckled. Nobody says fuck Paco with the same feeling you put behind the words, Sakura winked, that and your voice is the same. My voice was the same? I could have sworn it was different, well it doesn't matter, I missed you. Oh you are making me blush, Sakura joked as she gestured me to follow her to the back, so why the new face? I hummed, deciding whether to tell her the story or not, well, in the end deciding to retell all my misery with details. Excluding Vado out of my tale. From getting my new face, to being tortured by the big spirits, to traveling around the world, making sure to evade telling her about Vado. Some part of me was scared she and you would outright shun me for having the spirit of darkness and chaos within me. So for now, I would keep it a secret. After a few hours catching up, with Cheshire and Ursok eating the restaurant out, Sakura basically dragged me to the palace, to see you. Not gonna lie, I was a bit stressed about it, but mostly excited to see her, wondering what had she been up to all this time. And if she like Sakura would recognize me at first glance. Inside the palace we were led to use bedroom by a guard, inside you was sitting on her sofa reading a book. Putting the book down she looked towards the door with a scrutinizing look, staring at me. Akira. You gasped in shock, jumping out of her sofa and tackled me into a hug. I blinked in surprise, wondering how the fuck did she know, I didn't even talk, how? I mumbled hugging her back. Half spirit remember, you chuckled. So that's how she knew it was me the moment she saw me, well, I am glad. I have a question though, you said, breaking the embrace, why do you have a spirit inside you? I blinked in shock, instinctively taking a few steps back, while trying to formulate an answer for her inquiry, I, well fuck it, time to be completely honest, I can't lie to them, if they like me, they have to do it with Bato inside, I merged with one. Elaborate that answer, Sakura added with a confused expression. Taking a deep breath I started to tell them about Vado, about how he was one of the spirits that formed chaos and order. That Aang had the order and I had the chaos. That because of that there were two avatars now, I spared no detail in my journey, from me becoming the dark avatar to almost killing Aang. Wow, you said after a long moment of silence, assimilating what I had told her. So you are the avatar. Or rather an avatar. Sakura concluded. Pretty much, I nodded. And, you feel okay? Sakura added that empathetic thing you said you had. Doesn't got crazy with the spirit of chaos inside of you. Yes, yes it does, not much. Liar, you sighed. All right, it does bother me, but not as much, I chuckled, so you two are okay with, everything. Yep, Sakura winked, no matter how powerful you get kiddo, you will always be my little Akira. No chaotic spirit can change what we feel, or new face, you giggled. Thanks, I smiled hugging them both forcing myself not to cry, not wanting to show weakness, but I couldn't, it felt nice to be loved. Even with all the darkness inside of me, they loved me. They weren't even a bit afraid of me. Now, how about we have a nice dinner? Sakura said, I'll pay. Deal, you, and I both said in one voice. Comment. 65 comments. Vote. One left. Chapter 59, Chapter 59. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? After the very emotional reunion with my two human friends, too, huh. I really need to increase that number. It is just sad. Anywho, after the reunion, we spend the day eating and catching up. 
Apparently the Northern Water Tribe was suffering more than ever, with the Fire Nation destroying their ships, ships that brought food and other various necessary items, putting the entire tribe in a precarious situation. Hundreds of soldiers dying almost on a daily basis just to provide an inch of commodity and safety, which while not surprising altogether, it shocked me a bit. This was a side of the war I hadn't expected. In the show, the Northern Water Tribe never had any problems of this magnitude. I never expected things to get this rough, a naive thought, this wasn't a show anymore, war was as real as anything else. I simply decided to think otherwise to shut down any regrets of leaving. They have, you sighed, but don't blame yourself, she added with a frown, I know you Akira, and right now you must be thinking, that this got worse because you left us, so let me clarify, all of this in no way, is your fault. A man alone can only do so much in a war, Sakura added. Nice sentiments, but I knew I was at that point strong enough to make a difference, maybe not win the war, but I was strong enough to reduce the damage. Maybe before, but I can now, I was the dark avatar, I had now the power to bring Ose and his troops to his knees, I have the power to stop this now, with your avatar powers. Sakura chuckled, allow me to paint you a picture, you take down Ose, revealing there is a second avatar that of course would make the Fire Nation stop, but for how long? You are suggesting, that once I die they will go back to their old ways. I knew what she wanted to say, and she had a point. But unlike most creatures that wasn't the case with me, thanks to Vado, I was not burdened by the evolutionary failure of aging, meaning they would never rebel, for I would be around forever, you do remember I am technically immortal. That would only keep them on a leash, Sakura sighed, an a leash made from fear breaks, they will at one point try to kill you, and start the war over again. Another very good point, fear can only hold something for so long, the moment that fear started to fade, they would go at everyone, again. All right, then what do you think we should do? I sighed. Well, I might have an idea, Sakura said, but, it's a risky one. More risky than killing Oze. I chuckled. Well my idea includes killing Oze, but in a way that would make, things easier politically speaking. Sakura said with an overly serious tone, quite abnormal for her. All right, you are scaring me Sakura, you chuckled nervously. What I'm about to tell you, it's something I have kept a secret for 18 years, Sakura stated, getting our attention, my name, my birth name is, Solon Lakon, I am a part of the Fire Nation, the nobility to be exact. I blinked a few times, looking her up and down, before vocalizing a single word, what? I, moved out of the Fire Nation for a various set of reasons, for one I hated what we stood for, Sakura smiled sadly, and I always wanted to, well, have a small in, I, what, you finally said, her operative system going back up, you, what, how, your papers show you are, from a tribe close to the you was shut up, as Sakura lighted her hand on fire, oh my god, you are, papers are easy to forge, Sakura chuckled, huh, I was still trying to grasp all the new information, my plan is simple, we go back to the Fire Nation, I go back to my family, I present you as my son, and we start a coup, Sakura said, breaking the silence. Huh, Akira EXE is not working, please restart the system. I still keep contact with father every now and then, he thinks I'm researching the air temples, so, they will not suspect a thing, Sakura added. Huh, both me and you said, the hardest part will be convincing my father of helping us, but he is a man of family about anything, so he will side with you if he thinks you are his grandson, and with me because I am his baby girl, Sakura chuckled, so will my brothers. Huh, I mumbled. Huh, you nodded. Then, once we had their support, we just have to start a coup, kill the Fire Lord, and put your pretty ass on the throne Akira, Sakura chuckled. Huh, Akira EXE restarting please stand by. Huh, you mumbled. The next thing would be marrying you to a foreigner, that would cement the peace even more, Sakura winked at us. Huh. Oh come on. This is not as impressive as you getting a new face, body, spirit, age, and last but not least the dark incarnation of chaos within you, Sakura pouted. I am sorry, I said coming back to reality, it's just, wow. No kidding, you nodded, it's mind-blowing. I am already knew Akira would do something of stupid proportions on his trip. Yes, I am predictable, I nodded. But this is mind-boggling, you added. It's true, I am a chaotic menace, but I did not expect this. Heck I had Vado declaring his love to Rava above this on my list, I laughed. 
Don't make me come out there, Vado growled waking up just for that. You can't I inwardly chuckled. All right I get, Sakura chuckled, but what do you guys think? I think it's a fun idea, worst case scenario I kill Oze, best case scenario I kill Oze, I shrugged, it's a win-win for me. Yeah and if things go as planned, you would be the fire lord, Sakura smiled. Say what now? Both you and I shouted in shock. Comment. 94 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 60, Chapter 60. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? Both you and I sat while we silently paid attention to Sakura's plan, while simple and possibly very viable, provided, of course, things go as planned. The plan was to go back to the Fire Nation, where she would present me as her child, and with time, start a rebellion from within. This plan while beautiful on paper, it had a bunch of holes. Like, for example, while she had indeed kept contact with her father, she hadn't told him about her having any kids at all. So things regarding my existence and how I just suddenly came to be would be hard to prove and fill. Sakura, what exactly are you going to tell him, I mean? I sighed, it's. Look, while I am up for the idea, I want to understand how will you make them believe I am your son. Well, I might have, told my dad I had a kid, Sakura said, blushing, I got a cat a year after I left, and well, I referred to him as my baby on my letters, and dad never corrected me. Oh god, please tell me my name is not Cotton Ball or something, I chuckled. No, I never named him. I just called him baby, Sakura giggled. So, let me see if I get this right. 18 years old you left the Fire Nation, right? I asked, getting a nod from an answer, then a year later, you got a cat, and in your letters, you called him your kid or baby, right? Sakura nodded once again, your dad, somehow never asked if, that baby or kid, was real or what was his name, or if he or she, was human, right? Well, he did ask, he knows baby was a boy, Sakura said, all right, but, your father never showed any interest in him? I mean, if he thought it was your baby, and he is like you described, wouldn't he had tried to meet him, and or at the very least, send some gifts? He can't leave the Fire Nation, his position requires him to stay, and well, he did send a lot of stuff for his imaginary grandson, every year I get a gift and money for him, now you. With a letter of him begging me to go back so that he can meet his grandson, Sakura sighed, he just doesn't push me, because he just thinks I am still mad with him, for, what he did. All right, so do I need a name change? I asked. No, Akira is pretty common, Sakura smiled. So, what happens after he gets that throne? You asked, breaking her silence. Well, the idea is that once Akira has thrown, we will set to destroy the violent groups from within that incite violence, adding more fuel to the flames of this chaotic world. Our mission is curing the Fire Nation of its disease, Sakura said with a deadly cold tone, by eliminating it, entirely. Risky, but probably safer than anything Akira was probably thinking, you chuckled teasingly. Safety is for the weak, I shot back at you, with a confident smirk, before turning back to Sakura, anyhow, let's do it. Perfect, Sakura beamed at me. With a very unorthodox plan at hands, I decided to stay on the tribe for a bit, to relax. Meditating by the spirits, without letting the rest of the tribe know I was here, as to avoid fucking the plan. As I meditated above the tree close to the spirit oasis, laying near the two spirits, I couldn't help but let my mind wander into the depths of this adventure I was about to embark on. For one, I did not want to rule. Not for long, at the very least, I knew my shortcomings, and one of them was my social skills, I was barely able to tolerate small groups of people around me, so an entire country would be a bit too much. But I did want to destroy the war-loving aspects of the Fire Nation society by cutting them from the root. After that, I would probably have to find someone worthy of ruling. Someone, completely opposite to Oze. Iroh? That could work if he wanted the throne. I suppose I will see how to fix that as I go. You could leave a, cub? Is that how you humans call your littles? Vado inquired, breaking my meditation. You mean an heir, that would mean I would have to stay until the kid is ready. Ain't nobody got time for that. I chuckled. I wasn't going to lie, the idea of fucking the timeline, so bad my knowledge of it becomes obsolete, it's very enticing. So much, it's the second reason on my list for going with this plan. 
because until now, my changes on the story had been pretty small, like killing Zhao, that didn't change shit. Killing Oze, on the other hand, would change the entire world as I knew it from TV, making my journey very interesting. Sakura POV 18 years ago, I vowed to never go back to the Fire Nation, a place that since childhood I had grown to despise. We were sheep following an ideal, that the Fire Lord was perfect. And for that perfection, we applaud his every action, no matter how awful and inhuman said actions were. There it was, my nation praising a mad king. I was happy here, more than I could have possibly hoped for me 20 years ago, I had given up in trying to change the world. And now, I was going back, for I had found the weapon, the key I was looking for. Akira was the final piece of the puzzle, the weapon I would use to break the chains. I felt bad for using him, but, I wanted to save my country and the world from its own outdoing. Life in the Fire Nation, in this world, was nothing but a momentary flicker with every cruel second spent delaying the inevitable in an endless war that Aang the Avatar, and every Avatar before him had failed. Balance? Harmony? Bullshit? Chaos was ultimately the only thing that ruled us, that's why I knew Akira was the right person for this job. He was a human that embraced the chaos within him instead of hiding behind a sea of lies to make himself feel better. A chaotic avatar was what his world needed. Not the other avatars. Every single avatar before Aang had failed us. Their so-called quests for peace had doomed us all. In this life, nothing was fair, the system the white avatars themselves had created was broken. But with Akira on my side, I was going to help him tear it all down breaking a system that had always been flawed and remaking it into one that works, one that doesn't rely on the help of the avatar that had so many times before failed us. One that is harsh and fair for everyone. I still remembered what Aang said before leaving, every life is precious. A kid like that was not suited for anything. Life was cruel. From our very first breath to our last, we are doomed to follow the broken path other avatars had left behind for us. But no matter what we do, the path always ends at the same door. War. If Roku were half the man Akira was, he would have killed Sozin, stopping him altogether his idiotic ideas of war. Leaving a message to those that seek to disturb the peace. But he couldn't. Aang was on the same path. A naive little child that thought Oze's life was precious. Akira, on the other hand, was not a stranger to killing. And never did without a good reason. He understood the root of all evil had to be exterminated if peace was to endure comment 86 comments vote one left chapter 61 chapter 61 if you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer love ya after a week of meditation and hanging out with you i was ready to leave the tribe once again this time with sakura by my side we said our goodbyes to everyone and marched towards the fire nation with one thing in our heads killing Oze. Sakura was obviously nervous with this plan. And maybe I shouldn't have accepted her idea so fast. Now she has to risk everything she has worked for, in this. When I just could have waited for the Fire Lord to open for an attack. After walking for an hour, I summoned Cheshire and Ursok, with Cheshire being the key. Fire he who would fly us to the Fire Nation, saving us time and money on this endeavor. But even with Cheshire being our transportation method, it would take us two days to get to the Fire Nation border. Though this was an immense improvement to our other alternatives. Now, my father's name is Akon Lakon. He loves playing chess and poker. He has an addiction to chocolate and hates mosquitoes. His favorite sport is fire catcher and he loves Earth Kingdom music but he doesn't let anyone know, for political reasons. Sakura said, breaking the silencer, he is a sucker for romance and loves his family, if you want something from him. Just call him Papa or Grandpa, he will melt at that, quite literally. Oh boy this is going to be, very entertaining, Cheshire purred in laugh. What am I supposed to be? Ursok shouted in question, wondering what his role was. You, two are his pets. Sakura said somewhat uncertain, just don't talk, normal pets don't talk. Ursok looked at her and, barked, bark. Fire bears, they don't, barking is for. Sakura sighed, we will work on that. A pet. Chisire hummed, I can finally be an asshole and people will love me for it. I chuckled, all right. I think I got it. Now, on to the next thing. Sakura sighed, if you show too much fire bending prowess, many nobles will try to get your hand for their daughters, so, try to keep a low profile. 
Arranged marriages? Great. I see. We continued our trip mostly in silence with Sakura telling us about all the customs and things we had to expect. From how to behave around other nobles and what to do in certain social occasions. Giving me specifically a full walkthrough on how to behave in the first stage of our plan. That was fitting in. And getting some political allies. All the plans were so overly complicated, that I was starting to think Vado was right, that it was best if I just went and slay that bitch. No political games in the middle. But, I decided to do otherwise, because like I had said, worst case scenario I end up killing him. Best case scenario I end up killing him. The difference between the two was the process. One was short, the other was, well, considerably more time consuming. Though not all things considered, this overly time consuming plan, could bring me some, unforeseen benefits. For one, being a noble I would have access to a firebender teacher, being the element I lack the most in skill, if you don't count air bending which I suck. The point being, I would abuse the fuck out of my recently acquired noble privileges to get in a firebending school and, learn the bases, and master my third element. Though I didn't consider myself a master in any bending yet. I had a high standard for it. For me to be a master in my terms, I had to master the element with all their respective subcategories of bending. After approximately half a day flying, we descended on a nearby unnamed island to set our camp. If we continued at this pace we would be at the Fire Nation by tomorrow before midnight. So, you want me to call you sweetie or... Akira. Sakura teased, getting comfortable inside her sleeping bag. Akira, please, I did not like her calling me sweetie, it was... weird. Akira, the Fire Lord, ha, Sakura chuckled, things sure are getting interesting. I am sure it will, regardless of what happens, I chuckled. Agila POV. Father had called me back to deal with some political situations, not exactly the best moment for it. But with the day of the black sun above us, it was to be expected, attacks could occur during such a day. And who better than to ensure everything goes accordingly to our standards. For one there was a very high chance the avatar and his little friends would attack. Which would provide me the chance to play with the avatar a bit. Maybe even capture it, if I played my cards correctly. That of course, was only a big if. We didn't know for sure if the avatar was going to come or not. We are going back. E. Tylee giggled. Your happiness is, deeply upsetting, my muttered, I envy your naivety. Orders from the Fire Lord himself, I said with a final tone. I couldn't wait to be back, and show father once again why I was the best option he had. The best heir. That I was better than Zuzu in every way. Iro POV. The spirit realm was different, at first I didn't understand why, but... A few glances around showed me the answers I was seeking for. Vado was missing. At first, I panicked. Aang was nowhere near the skill he needed to defeat a foe like Vado. But seeing how calm the spirit and physical realm were, it meant one of two things. One, Vado was still in a prison, but a different one or two. Someone had merged with him. Of course there were other possibilities, like a more powerful spirit killing him, that would in turn force him to reform inside Rava. But something told me that wasn't the case here. For some inexplicable reason, I had a strong feeling the world had two avatars now. One for order and one for chaos. The world is changing, and for once I cannot know if those changes are for the better, I sighed. Comment. 70 comments. Vote. One left. Chapter 62. Chapter 62. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? After a long, long flight, we had arrived at our destination, and I was having a lot of second thoughts about this. Politics weren't my game at all, but once again, I found myself around a little corner, one that I like to call, it's worth a shot, at the very least. My meeting with my grandparents? God, that sounds wrong, anyway, my meeting with my newly acquired family members was. Not as I expected, I was prepared for some type of harsh treatment, not to me but to Sakura. I mean, what parent would just accept their child being 18 years away from them without coming to visit? Well, they were pretty okay with her, accepting her decisions, mostly because they were under the assumption she was learning about the airbenders and their culture, she was apparently a researcher. One of those that explore old shit to get knowledge. Another thing I learned as soon I got home was that her nickname was Sakura, reason why she had chosen that as her fake identity, though I suppose it wasn't a fake identity, just her hiding behind a truth, 
kinda smart actually. Immediately after my arrival, I was greeted by two overly affectionate grandparents, who hugged the ever-living shit out of me as soon as Sakura introduced me, for them, this was normal, for me, it was weird as shit. A few minutes later, after exchanging a few words with them, I was guided to my room alongside Ursok and Shasire, mostly because I would probably get lost if I didn't have one of the butlers guiding me, the house was massive, once I was in the room, I was a tad shocked and how loaded Sakura was. The room I was given was bigger than any other room I had ever had, bigger than any house I had the pleasure of living in. I had two fucking living rooms in my room, one for visits and one for personal visits, according to the butler, but that was just the tip of the rich iceberg. White marble floors, gold decorations, and more. This family was rich, very rich, and she wants to be a maid. Cheshire was the first one to talk, as soon as the butler left, she probably had a maid for the maid. Well, whatever makes her happy, I chuckled as I jumped into the really, really, really soft bed, God. I think I will take this mattress for me, it beats sleeping on the floor or the ground by a long margin, I had found the love of my life with this mattress, it was, no words could describe the texture, and before I knew it, I dozed off. The next morning, I woke up groaning, my body refusing to let go of its newfound soulmate, the mattress, but with determination and a lot of willpower, I blinked away the lingering yet sweet haze of sleep as I groggily sat up on my bed, rubbing my eyes while stretching, taking a look around I noticed the window in my room was open, revealing a sunny day, and considering Chesire was still sleeping, and so was Ursok, it meant someone had entered my room, this overly comfortable mattress was a liability, if I can't be alert, I can die, taking a deep breath, I jumped out of the sweet but dangerous prison of my bed to find, so Fire Nation clothes folded neatly on my night table. Meaning it was the butler or a maid that had entered my room, for those clothes were not there the day before. Sighing in defeat, I strip off my clothes, putting on the ones my fake family had so graciously provided me with. As I do so, I felt something watching me but not moving thanks to my elemental senses. In a mild shock, whoever had entered was still here. I jumped back, turning around. With my eyes being immediately drawn to the bathroom, where I had felt the presence. Morning, young master, as the young maid bowed, a single thought occurred to me, I was still as I came to this world, well, not this one, but you get the gist, I was naked. Normally I don't have any problems with nudity, but as a man, I struggle with a problem in the mornings all men or at least most do, one that I prefer not to blind the little maid with. I mean, I don't even know her name. Jesus, for the love of, why are you here? I exclaimed in shock and mild embarrassment while putting on my underwear in a rush, I did not want her to see my morning wood, the funny thing is, the maid was completely okay with it. Not in the okay sexy way, but in the way that said, I had seen so many people naked to the point I had become immune to the effect known as getting flustered by nudity. My name is not Jesus, master, and as for why am I here, I was assigned to be your personal maid, the maid answered, without skipping a beat. Next time, knock. I said with a small frown while putting on my pants. As you wish, the maid nodded. In the meantime, Cheshire, who had just woken up, was struggling to rein his unyielding need to laugh at me, leave, for now, miss. Leah Ember, the maid answered before leaving the room. Really? Cheshire laughed, you have Vado inside of you? And you panic when someone sees you naked? Look, I don't have anything against it. Yes you do Akira, just accept it. Heck, she was pretty, but... I don't like surprises, I sighed, which was also true, like 80% of my panic was not knowing someone was there, while I flashed them. Unbeknown to me, of course, if I ever flash someone, I will have control of the situation, and not. Okay, why am I thinking of that? Get back to your standard train of thought. Young master, after you finish talking to yourself, please come down, to have a balanced Fire Nation breakfast, Lady Lacon is waiting for you, Leah said through the door. Fuck. I groaned. Comment. 55 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 63. Chapter 63 1. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. 15 chaps ahead. Love ya? After asking my grandparents and mother, god that will take a while to get used to, anyway after asking them or rather demanding them some privacy. They ordered all the personnel to stay out of my room unless I myself asked them to enter. A man needs his privacy. 
14. After that, I started my day with a very delicious breakfast, and immediately after that I was told to go and explore the city, while they discussed some stuff with my dear mother. Seeing I had nothing better to do for now, and our coup plans were going to take some time, I agreed. Besides I wanted to see the Fire Nation capital up close anyway. Before leaving I was given a large sum of money, to spend as I saw it fit. With no reason to reject the money, I graciously took it, and started to explore the vast and rich Fire capital, buying shit I would probably never use, eating in every restaurant that crossed my path, and tipping the servers outrageous amounts. But no matter what or how much I spent, I was nowhere near using the money they had given for one day. Thanks for everything, I smiled at the waiter, as I left, tripping into someone. Apologize, someone demanded, by the tone of voice, posture, smell, and demeanor I knew it was a noble woman, typical. 1. Sorry, I said, inwardly chuckling as I stood up, being mildly shocked at what I saw. Agila, was the one I had just tripped against. 6. On your knees, Agila smirked, I want you to apologize on your knees, beg for forgiveness. 2. Oh well, this plan. The coup plan lasted more than I anticipated, two whole days, well, a day and a half, no, I said, matching her glare, I already apologized. 5. I wasn't asking, Agila said, glaring at me. If this crazy ass bitch thinks I will kneel and lick her boots just because I crossed her paths, she is in for a surprise, okay, still not kneeling though, I winked, as I walked out of the restaurant. 1. Holy macaroni? He talked back to Agila. Tylee commented in awe, and how did I know it was Tylee? Well she was doing a cartwheel while talking. 3. Who are you? Ajala asked. Akira Lakon, I replied, without missing a beat, all while still walking towards the door. The Lakons don't have anyone around your age, Mai commented, and how did I know it was her? Well, her voice, body posture and eyes screamed she was so over with everything, she would have fit well in my old world. 1. Mother and I came back. I was born outside the Fire Nation, I shrugged. Then I can understand your stupidity, allow me to give you a second chance to kneel, Ajala chuckled, here in the Fire Nation, my word is law. 3. By all means princess, make me kneel, I challenged, shocking both my and Tai Li. 1. Very well, I shall indulge your suicidal thoughts, Ajala sighed, trying to look bored, but she was enjoying this, she wanted to make an example out of me, she wanted to make me kneel and in the process she wanted to make me suffer. 3. He's dead, Mai muttered with a sigh. Hmm, I don't think so, Tai Li giggled, landing in front of Mai, the way he walks, and presents himself, and the color of his aura are very scary. I think he has a chance, oh maybe we can't match them. 12. Is she really playing matchmaker? I asked Ajala. 1. Don't pay too much attention to her, all the brain power she has, it's used on her acrobatics and in this type of thing. Ajala replied with an annoyed expression, so, still up for me making you kneel. I chuckled, the only way I will kneel is if someone is strong enough to make me, I winked. 1. Very well, follow me, Ajala ordered and just because I had no fucking idea where we could fight, I did as I was told. 1. And I walked behind Ajala, a single thought came to my mind, that after beating her I would have to take Sakura out of here, and come back later to kill Oze. For I knew I was going to win this petty duel. Fucking the coup plan. 6. Ajala POV. 1. I have but one day in the Fire Nation and I already have to show an insubordinate idiot, why he has to obey my every command. Though Tai Li was right, this Akira, was no normal guy. I also could tell he was a warrior. I wonder how long it will take me to break his bravado. He seems confident of his skills, overly so, so much that it will be a pleasure to break his confidence to show him why I was the best of the best. 1. So where are we going? Akira asked, with a yawn, he was bored? He was going to fight me? And he was bored. That wasn't confidence, that was stupidity. To a place where I won't burn the city while teaching you respect. 1. Neat, Akira chuckled. 7. Tai Li POV. A boy? A handsome one? And one with enough metaphorical balls to stand up to Ajala. Finally, someone that could date her? 21. Ajala is always complaining no boy ever hits on her, and how could they, every single one of them is afraid of her. But this Akira wasn't. He had all the check marks on my Ajala dating profile. Handsome, check. Confident, check. Well in doubt, 
Well, there is no way a man with such confidence has a small BFF, so, check. 23. From a noble family? Check. He was the grandson of one of the richest family in the Fire Nation. Now all he had to do is survive Ajala long enough for her to crush on him. And everything will be okay? 2. I am so excited about this. I giggled. I don't understand or comprehend how your brain works, my side, or if you even have one to begin with. 6. Comment. 83 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 64. Chapter 64. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. 15 chaps ahead. Love ya? Watched by a few dozen spectators that had followed us, Angela and I got ready for our battle in the training yard the Fire Princess herself had selected. Tell me, began Angela, is this what they call, stupid male pride? With a low chuckle, I quickly devised several possible answers for that. Before deciding I might as well annoy her. Who knows? I shrugged, with my arms crossed, besides it's only stupid if you lose. Well, I hope you don't disappoint, Angela smirked, getting into position. I smiled at her and said nothing. Disappoint? If someone was about to be disappointed it was me, though I suppose she also will be disappointed, she couldn't touch me. Very well, I shall indulge you, I smiled as I uncrossed my arms, getting into my own position, drawing from my sword lessons, with legs parted slightly for better support, the same goes for you, please do not disappoint, I added, with an inviting look, telling her to attack first with just a glance. Ajala noticed, and with a smile of disbelief, she attacked. The torrent of blue fire coming at me was deadly but boringly predictable, and copying her motions, I parried the attack easily with one hand and attacked with the other, my power far from being at its best, I was after refraining from using Vado and his emotions to fuel my fire. Ajala dodged the attack jumping out of the way towards me, closing the distance between us, showing just how agile and fast she was. She then grabbed my hand before I could move out of the way and tried to burn my face, but with a smile, I grabbed her fist, stopping the attack before it even began, diffusing it with my own fire bending. Not bad, but too risky, wouldn't you agree? I smiled, throwing her into the air with a single hand. Ajala chuckled in mild amusement as she maneuvered graciously to the ground. Without saying anything, she lunged at me, each kick and punch followed by a deadly torrent of blue fire, but I simply smiled, slipping away without much difficulty. Keeping my eyes on her as to avoid receiving any damage, so, is this all? I inquired, kicking the little princess a few meters back. No, Ajala replied, with a glare, summoning her favorite technique, the lightning. How interesting. I commented with awe, studying the motions she was showing, learning every little detail I could. Copying her motions and remembering what I had read and watched about this deadly technique, I closed my mind and separated my chi while copying her motions, and easy enough, I had generated my first lighting. This was so shocking Ajala herself lost composure for a second, but soon recover shooting her lighting that clashed with mine. I took the blinding explosion as a chance to close our distance and delivering a punch to her stomach with enough strength to make her double over, spitting a bit of blood. She gasped in disbelief for a short time. I must thank you for teaching me how to use that technique, one thing was readying about it, but to see it in motion, it helped me put all the pieces together, I smiled at her kneeling down to see her eye to eye. Ajala growled, now, I will show you what I am capable of. I sure hope it's a thousand times better. I smiled deep down, it pleased me that she was going to start taking this seriously, otherwise, this battle was nothing more than me beating her. I continued to study her base and forms, copying her techniques and adapting them to my own style as I battle her. What I had yet to achieve was creating blue flames, I had so far achieved purplish flames that were quite hot but no as hot as the flames Ajala herself was using. Well, princess, not that this hasn't been entertaining but, I have things to do, I smiled, I had for one been humoring her for a good half an hour, I wanted to do something else, I had, after all, learned more than enough from this little duel, with a sigh I dash at her, dodging her attack, once I was in front of her, I created a curtain of smoke, and jumped behind her, while she tried to figure out where I was, and then proceeded to hit in the back of her neck, with a strong chop, knocking her out cold. He won. My commented in disbelief. OMG. Tylee giggled, running towards me, while I kept my guard up, 
I had no idea what she was going to try, are you single? As soon as that question left her mouth, I heard a beep on my head, like the one people, used to hear on the 90s while trying to connect to the internet. I am. I replied, wondering if she was trying to ask me out or something. Not that I was against it. Ty Lee was one of the seven Fire Nation girls I would without doubt smash, the other six were her sisters, jokes aside, I would not say no if the chance happened to be available. Then again she could be trying to set me up with Angela, and I'd rather be single. Good? Would you like to go out on a date with a very pretty girl? Ty Lee giggled, oh, thank goodness she isn't trying to set me up with the Arkham case. I would be delighted, I smiled at her. Ye, I'll be in contact soon. Ty Lee smiled, running back to Mai, who was repeating over and over again, the fact that I had won as if said fact was impossible. Well, I'm off, I waved at them, leaving an unconscious Ajala, a very happy Ty Lee, and a very confused and broken Mai behind. From this battle, I had learned a lot, one that in terms of technique, Ajala was leagues above me, for now, but in raw power, experience, talent, speed, and endurance, I was superior to her. Being the sole reason I stumped her on this duel without much problem. Comment. 101 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 65. Chapter 65. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. 15 chaps ahead. Love ya. 1. After my little duel with the fire princess I went back to exploring the city before going back to the Lacon's home. Wondering when my date with Ty Lee would be, I was genuinely curious. With a smile I entered the house, being greeted by Sakura. 5. How was your day? Sakura inquired. It was interesting, I chuckled, I had a fight. Sakura eyed me for a second, before asking, a fight? With. Ajala, I sighed. Did you win? Sakura asked. 2. I did, and learned a lot from her, I nodded, surprised she wasn't scolding me for fighting the fire princess. Well, now we wait, Sakura sighed. 1. For what? I blinked. To see if the princess will take this as an insult or a challenge, Sakura sighed. Probably an insult, that girl is in serious need of psychological help, we'll see. And the days passed, and I was fully expecting the fire princess to come for revenge with an army, or her father to declare me a traitor to the nation, but surprisingly enough, none of that had happened yet. So I took my sweet time exploring the city and every little restaurant I could get my hands to, I wasn't gonna lie. I was enjoying this, it was relaxing. 1. None hated me here, being a noble and all, I was loved by some people and ignored by others, which in turn made my empathy powers for the first time in a long time feel good. Especially inside the Lacon's home. Sakura and her parents loved me. And as corny as it sounds it feels good to be loved. Especially when you can freaking taste like food every emotion. 4. As for the date I was promised, well, I was still waiting for Ty Lee to come, but by this point I was sure, Ajala intimidated her out of the date. I can't picture Ajala being okay with Ty Lee dating the guy that defeated her. 1. Oh well, I chuckled. Ty Lee POV. When I told Ajala she had a date with the big, strong, handsome, and powerful Akira, she flipped. It was adorable seeing her getting flustered. I knew she didn't dislike this, otherwise she would have let me know very violently. Instead she was nervous, for the first time in my life, both in mine and Mai's life, Ajala was nervous. 29. Why would I date the guy that, humiliated me, Ajala muttered, trying to sound angry, at first she was, but now that the prospect of a date was in her horizon, that anger was gone, she was intrigued by Akira, about his prowess in battle, she wanted to date him. 5. I have to agree with Ty Lee, God that sounds wrong, my side, but he seems like your type. Yes powerful, handsome, and, well equipped, I giggled. 3. Well equipped, indeed he was, his techniques were flawless, Ajala commented, with the sexual innuendo flying over her head, she was going to need more help than I had originally anticipated, she's like a baby on this matter, I might learn a thing or two, improving my own technique. 5. My side, so, are we doing this? Come on Ajala. I know you like him, I teased her. Fine. Ajala relented, first time for everything, but you two better help me, for if I fail of this mission I will burn you two down. 5. And there it was our old Ajala was back, barking at us, don't worry, if Akira doesn't kiss you by the end of the date, 
I will jump into your fire. Yep, that's how good I was. 3. As long as you two have that clear. Ajala nodded, fire igniting on her hands. Very well, I will go to this date, and like everything I will succeed. Burning anything on my way. By this point everything was burning around her, while she laughed like a maniac. 12. Alright, first tip, tone that down, a few hundred levels, maybe I should have promised another thing. 1. We are going to die, she will scare Akira out, and we will burn, Mai whispered to my ear. Don't be silly, Akira can take that and more. I sure hope so. Akira POV, two days later. There were a few things I didn't expect in life, things I considered borderline impossible, like Sokka defeating me, Paka being funny, Vado dancing, and stuff along those lines. Today, one of those impossible, or rather improbable things happened. 6. Ajala was at my doorstep, dressed with a cute outfit instead of her uniform, looking at me, her emotions made everything clear, Tai Li had tricked me, Ajala was nervous, which was something I didn't expect from her. I expected anger, hate, maybe even envy, but none of that, just a girl, a crazy one at that, being nervous. 25. I have come for our date, Ajala stated. 11. I see, I replied. Do you need more time getting ready? Ajala inquired with a very awkward smile, her emotions flaring with the idea of getting rejected, making me wonder, why was she so invested on this? Why was a date with a random guy so important to her? 1. I. I wanted to say no, and leave her, but I just couldn't, give me five minutes to change my attire. Add a compliment Akira, she might be crazy but still looks kinda cute, and she doesn't need another reason to go even more crazy, I need after all to match your looks, though I doubt I will look quite as good, alright that's good enough. 24. Very well, Ajala nodded still with a very awkward smile, blushing a bit, I will wait here. Sakura looked at me, and Ajala outside from the window, as I dressed, you are having a date, with her. I, to be honest when I accepted I thought it was with Tai Li, I sighed. The girl you defeated. Sakura inquired. Yes, I nodded. The fire princess. Yes, I nodded once again. I don't know if I should be proud of you, or angry, Sakura added, meh, I'll be both, proud angry. 30. Don't worry, I doubt she will want to date me more than once, I winked. 1. I don't know, Sakura commented with a smile, she seems kinda invested on this. Well, fuck it. Who knows maybe she isn't as crazy as the show showed her to be, maybe she's just an entitled child. No Akira, you know she's crazy, stop trying to find reasons to make this a sound decision. 20. I sighed, fuck. 32. Comment. 114 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 66, Chapter 66 2. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? You know the saying, don't stick it crazy? Well, guess what? That saying was absolutely right before today, I never had the experience of dating a crazy girl. And boy was Ajala crazy, but I couldn't really blame her. 18. From our brief encounter during our battle, and right now in our date. I had gathered more than enough information about her to get a pretty good general idea of what she was and how she had come to be what she was. Ajala was a firebending prodigy and a dedicated perfectionist, showing this during our date, as she even controlled the way she walked, making sure her steps were perfect and symmetrical. Showing she was once nothing less about herself and other than absolute control. As for a psychological point of view, she very smart but her incredibly high IQ was eclipsed by her narcissistic and antisocial personality disorders, which had taken roots inside of her head, thanks to dear old dad, Ose. 2. As our date progressed, I questioned her without revealing my motives about her childhood, trying to sound like a guy interested in her upbringing, and just as I expected, she had started to show these cruel and sadistic tendencies from a very young age, with her father nurturing these behaviors with fake love while shutting down any good in her before it even began to grow. 3. Thanks to Ose, even as a child, she had proven to be cruel, having a sociopathic personality, showing almost no empathy or remorse for her actions, even when those actions harmed others both physically and emotionally, her targets usually being Zuko and her friends, Mai and Tai Li. But, from what she was sharing, she wasn't always like this. Apparently, there was a time where she and Zuko were close before the monster of Ose took a more active role in raising her. 
showing that Ajala was heavily influenced by her demon-like father, who was a monster in every possible way, leading her to a labyrinth without exit, as she believed she would win his love if she was more like him. However, that was impossible, for Oze was a ruthless man incapable of love. And as Ajalta desperately tried to win Oze's love, being like him, her mother Ursa and her drifted apart. 2. Because as soon as little Ajala started to emulate her father, being cruel and sadistic to win his love, Ursa started to scold her for her acts of cruel nature, which apparently occurred pretty often. With her showing clear favoritism to Zuko, Ajala focused on trying to win the favor of her father, but without her mother's love. But none of that came, Oze never loved her but did show favoritism to her. But without the love of the two most important people of her life, she was traumatized, shaping the fear that she could not count on the love from anyone, no matter how close they seemed, which cursed her to be unable to trust others, and like her father, began to control those around her using fear. This, of course, wasn't what she had shared, this was the empathic version I had gotten with powers, as she shared her story from a very delirious point of view, showing her grasp of reality was very broken, or that she was forcing herself to believe otherwise. Zuko was always jealous of me, Ajala grinned, finishing her story, but behind her confident smile, I was drowned in a sea of pain, pain like I had never before experienced. True sadness, how in the world can she talk without crying, is beyond me. 4. That's quite the story, I smiled, so I have another question for you. Very well, but that means you owe me two questions, Ajala stated, in a demanding tone. Why did you agree to come and date me? I asked, knowing very well it was Tai Li who had put her to this, I mean. Ajala would not have this initiative, and besides, she was laughing even when I wasn't trying to be funny, meaning Tai Li had given her some awful advices, I know for a fact this wasn't your idea, at least not fully. I mean, after winning our duel, I expected you to come at me but not in a romantic way. 2. Ajala frowned and then smiled, well, I, because together you and I will be the strongest couple in the entire world? With our powers combined we will dominate the earth. She finished, lighting her hands in her signature blue fire. 3. So, because I am strong, I chuckled. Basically, Ajala nodded. So, you don't find me handsome. Why am I teasing the Arkham case? But as my mind questioned why I was doing this, I found myself unable to stop. 6. I do, Ajala nodding, stepping closer, her face inches away from mine, in the corner of the restaurant room I had rented. Good, I smiled, her face was at this point so close to mine that I could smell the sweet fragrance of her perfume invading my senses, with her emotions showing a light tint of hope, hope that I wasn't going to reject her, why was she feeling this, she barely knew me and lost in this feeling of the unknown the next thing I know is that her tongue was in my mouth. Her kiss was so instantaneous, so urgent that it overpowered all my senses as it sought some unreachable yet tangible feeling. 14. I knew now why I hadn't outright rejected her, it wasn't because I pitied her or because of not fucking the plan, if that was the case, I would have kneeled the first time I met her, avoiding all of this. No, the real reason I hadn't reject her was because I was like her, we were both broken on different levels. 23 and stopping any resistance, not that there was one, to begin with, I let myself immerse on this feeling, as my lips mashed against hers, trying to flatten and destroy her mouth, in a wild desire of contact. She hungrily pushed back, her mouth open, tongue exploring the moist space within my mouth, with my tongue doing the same, with Ajala gripping my head firmly, showing even though she wanted control, holding my head as if to keep me from escaping. 4. How broken was I? How broken was she? And how sad was it? That I felt comfort in this kiss. 34. Comment. 110 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 67. Chapter 67. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? 1. Agila POV. Maybe time stopped when his lips met mine but the flutter inside of me only intensified. My heart pounded inside my chest as my knees got weaker, I was feeling weak and for some reason I was okay with it. I could only focus on how soft Akira felt against my mouth, how aggressive and delicate his touch was, how addictively he invaded all my senses. A part of me was afraid, afraid this was a dream, a part of me wasn't clear if I had dreamed this moment to life, like many times before with different things, 
but another part of me grounded me to reality, showing me this was as real as anything else. 2. Behind this kiss there was raw and pure emotion, showing even here a battle for control, in the way his fingers held my head in place, as I did the same, in the way Akira kept his eyes half open, sneaking a peek every time he came back for air, just to make sure that like me, this wasn't a product of his imagination. 3. I still wasn't sure if nature rooted for this moment or if my mind tricked me into this wonderful moment, but every breath I took I smelled the now sweet aroma of a river and for the first time since I have known myself, I didn't feel the need to win. If anything, the warm feeling of his breath on my face, although destabilizing, was inviting, making me for a brief moment consider losing against him once again, this time on purpose. But I wasn't going to let him win this so easily, so I held my place. 6. He didn't fear me, and surprisingly I was okay with that. It felt good whatever he was feeling for me right now. I, Akira muttered as we broke our kiss, his eyes lost in the background. Akira POV. What in the hell was that? I almost felt out of control, like if I had entered the avatar state for a brief moment and this was the result. Even now her lips looked inviting, welcoming. 1. I, I had no words, a part of me screamed I should fight this ludicrous feeling that I shouldn't have any feelings for the Arkham case, but unfortunately for that part of me, what I was feeling was not only overwhelming of his own, but even more intoxicating with what I was feeling from Ajala. Like a drug almost. No one before her had this raw feeling of wanting me so bad. 11. I wanted her, I didn't know why nor I cared. I wanted Ajala. And I was going to have her. 11. Akira. Ajala was about to say something, but this wasn't the time to talk. So I took a step forward, softly putting a hand on her face, demanding in a way another kiss as my lips were getting closer, the smell of her hypnotic beyond reason. She immediately shut up, and once again aggressively pushed back, her lips smashing against mine, and once again I felt that particular wave of warmth that made me question everything, like why was I feeling this, when I barely knew her. I continued to kiss her, as the taste of her silenced all my thoughts. She almost felt delicate under my arms like a porcelain figure that could break if I pressed her too hard, making my whole body tingle at the feeling, but it also felt so good, especially the feeling of her frame leaning against me as my arms wrapped around her felt nearly forbidden, yet so right. 7. This would probably change a lot of things in my life, but I didn't care, claiming her mouth was intoxicating, with the feeling being hungry and intense, the feeling her knees giving in, was truly magnificent. It was as if time had stopped right there for me to appreciate the moment, as we stood propped against the wall of the restaurant, glued to one another, as if no one else existed around us. Well, I have no words, I chuckled, breaking the kiss. You still owe me two questions, Ajala stated, her eyes sinking into my core. As I answered her questions, I started to question my motives, I knew this was wrong, I knew all the cons and problems of this, but it felt so right, she felt so small in my arms so mine. The worst part is even under all her defenses she had allowed herself to feel something for me, I could feel her raw desire for love, screaming at me not to reject her. The funny thing is, I knew I couldn't reject her, not anymore. That ship sailed a long time ago, for I felt something for her too. 26. Ty Lee POV. 2. At first I was nervous, Ajala was going on her first date, she was so smart and powerful with everything else, but so socially awkward when it came to boys. But this boy was different, he didn't fear her. Not a single bit. I knew that, I could see it on his aura. That like hers was broken, even more than hers. 16. So I made my personal mission to put those two together, giving Ajala all my knowledge about boys, like laughing if they say something, though she took this too seriously laughing even when there was no need. 1. I also told her to be the one to initiate the kiss, boys love that. But if I had to be honest I expected a little kiss, a peck on the lips, not the full-out make-out session they were having, it was beyond my shipping expectations. 4. The way they kissed was hypnotizing. I had never seen kisses like that, so powerful yet so delicate. 1. Ajala had a boyfriend. I smiled, there was no doubt of that. 5. For how long? My boringly added, if the Fire Lord doesn't like him, that's the end of them. 6. I have a feeling. He doesn't care about what the Fire Lord thinks. I replied, for some reason Akira seemed like the type of man that didn't care what others said. His aura said that much, but that was just the underline, 
I have seen the aura of Oze, I know with detail how much of a monster he is. And yet, beside Akira his aura feels like a kitten throwing a fit. 33. Comment. 109 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 68. Chapter 68. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. Love ya? After my first date with Ashila ended I went back to my house, with a single thought in mind, that there was no doubt I had feelings for her and that the worst part was that I knew it was stupid for me to do so, or rather impossible. I had after all known her for maybe a day or so, and yet, even though I knew her to be crazy as funny. I just couldn't find a reason good enough to motivate me to cut her off from my life. Every time I tried to think about one, my mind would wander to the very moment our lips met, how soft her lips felt and how aggressively hot it was. Needless to say, Ajala already had a feeling of possessiveness for me that emanated above her other emotions, like an animal claiming its territory. I could feel it and if somehow made me happy, to feel that, to feel her every emotion. I could still remember perfectly what she felt during our first kiss, at first she was scared of rejection, terrified that I would turn her down, then surprised I had reciprocated the kiss, and now she was elated with how things had resulted. It was weird, to feel every emotion coursing through her, like water in a river. But I couldn't deny it felt good feeling her lips touch mine, it was almost as if the world vanished around me, erasing any other emotion that wasn't her. Intoxicating my feelings. Well. I suppose things could be worse, I muttered, jumping into my bed. She seems like a nice girl. Chesire commented, maybe a tad violent but who am I to judge human mating rituals? I rolled my eyes at the cat, I just didn't expect to develop any feelings, it was better when I didn't have girl problems, I chuckled. Problems? Aren't you two a thing now? Cheshire asked, confused. I, I suppose we are, I wasn't entirely sure but considering how possessive the princess felt about me at the end of our date, it was safe to assume she saw me as hers now. Then what is the problem? Cheshire asked again. I, I don't know, I sighed, with a low groan, it's just that I, I didn't expect this to happen, in my mind I had a vision, an idea of her, and a single kiss shattered that, a single kiss shattered my barriers like I was a fucking sand castle, I chuckled, taking a deep breath, and the worst part is that I am not mad, just scared of what? I have no clue. I then turned to look at the cat, I know I make no sense, but, what I feel makes no sense. I suppose I understand, Shasire purred. You do. I chuckled. I have known you for quite a bit, to have a general idea of how you think, the cat nodded, no matter how powerful you are, or how immortal you become, you are still a living being, subject to confusion, fear or the unknown and more. Fear of the unknown? I inquired. You expected things to go a certain way, and now you have no idea where you stand, and that scares you a bit. Sometimes the things that scare us are not the things that can hurt physically us. Chesire chuckled, sometimes it's what we can't understand what scares us, and you can't understand this, not completely. I suppose, I sighed, wondering what if he was right? Was I scared I didn't anticipate any of this, or was I scared I wanted things to continue this way, that I wanted more of the blue fire princess? Thanks Chesire. It's a pleasure, Chesire smiled at me, with a warm tone. Ajala POV. I had a boyfriend, a man that didn't fear me, nor my father. And he was all mine, I would make sure of that, maybe I could bring him with me to my mission on the Earth Kingdom. Ensuring no other suicidal girl tried to conquer what I had conquered. I can't believe you have a boyfriend. Tylee giggled jumping upside down. You can't. I eyed her. There was no doubt I was going to win his heart and make it mine, I declared. There was no doubt? Of course it was, I never kissed a boy before him, or flirted with one, they all feared me, for a good reason, they were weak, pitiful, pathetic, and more, so all the information I had about this subject came from Ty Lee and some novels, I wasted some time with, it intrigued me what romance was, though I never believed I would care for it, it was still entertaining enough. But Akira changed that his rough and somehow at the same time soft lips changed that. I felt weak on his arms, little, fragile almost, and, I liked it, I just couldn't hate the feeling in the way he held me as if I was a porcelain doll about to break, being so delicate with me but at the same time aggressive trying to dominate our kiss, I of course didn't allow him to win so easily and fought for control, but still, the feeling was intoxicating. There was no ulterior motive under him, 
He cared not for my status or power. He just wanted me. So, now what? Mai asked. Well, now he joins our group, I stated. What about the possible invasion? Mai asked again. We still have some time before that, right now, we must go back to BA Sing Se, I replied, with Akira in my team, no one would stand in our way, the avatar would fall to our hands in a crushing defeat. Awesome. Tai Li smiled, but you should date him a few more times before you ask him to travel around the globe with us. I intended to do so, I said, I will wait 48 hours before going out with him again. Comment. 68 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 69, Chapter 69. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. https colon slash slash discord.gg slash 847423b join the discord server if you want oh whoa. Love ya? 48 hours after my date with Ajala, I woke up to see the fire princess herself, Ajala, in the living room of my house talking with Sakura and my so-called grandparents, in a very un manner, which almost made me panic, but a quick check to her emotions with my now very useful empathy powers showed that Ajala was actually just testing the waters, to see if there was any opposition on my family side that she would have to burn down to dust to get me. Honestly I'm flattered. You didn't tell me you were dating the fire princess, my grandfather commented with a smile, feeling both proud and scared. I was planning to, I commented, with clear amusement, Cheshire's words still echoing in my head, I had to accept things not always go as planned, nor here nor in the spirit realm. I liked Ajala, and I would be with her as long as that was a fact, something I had come to accept last night, after my crisis. Who can blame me? Even the best of us have some crisis. I'm sorry I ruined the surprise, Ajala apologized with a smirk, but behind her words, there was an underlying insecurity. She probably thought I didn't tell them right away because I wanted to keep our kiss in the shadows, just how much Ose had broken her. No, it's okay, I shrugged, this just makes things easier, I winked at her, as I walked down the stairs towards the living room where all the family was sitting. Do you have any plans for today? Ajala inquired with curiosity, her doubts slowly subsiding. I actually do have something to do, I nodded, and it should take me around an hour or two, why, did you come to take me out? I chuckled. Something like that, Ajala commented rolling her eyes, but I'll wait until you are fully available for it. Very well, I nodded as I slowly walked to her kneeling to her seated level, and with a soft smile and no warning, I pressed my lips against hers, softly, delicately, and full of desire, clearing any doubt in her mind. I was hiding or ashamed of what had happened between us, and as that brief second elongated I could feel her insecurities melt away, as I inhaled her shaky breath on my face, feeling the warmth of her skin on mine, and once we broke that short but meaningful kiss, I could still taste her lipstick lingering on my mouth as a gift, a gift just for me. Ajala was pleased with the kiss, while everyone else present was stunned, where can I find you after you finish, whatever you have to do, the fire princess inquired. I'll be back here as soon as I finish, I answered, leaving a stunned audience behind. When I left Ajala in my house with the excuse that I had to do something, it was because I actually had to do something, not just walk around, I had to meditate. Mostly because I wanted to talk with Vado, about a few things. I wanted to clarify some thoughts I had. For one, I wanted to ask him about what he thought about chaos and harmony. Chaos and harmony, Vado said, somewhat uncertain of my question, and how to answer it. Yes, I mean, you are the spirit of chaos, but what is harmony to you? I sighed, without harmony there can't be no chaos, for chaos without harmony becomes the natural order of things, therefore becoming harmony, starting a paradox. I chuckled, for something to exist an opposite must exist, otherwise its purpose becomes meaningless, I stated, hot without cold is just a word, how do we know what hot really is, if we have nothing to compare hot against? Why are you suddenly asking this? Vado said after a few seconds of silence. Well, I have some doubts, about what to do from now on, these last few days I had more than enough time to see things in another perspective. I chuckled, are we agents of destruction, or agents of change? After meeting Ajala I came to the conclusion we humans are the result of our personal experiences, the events in our life mold us, I was pushed to do a deal with you, just because I wanted to feel safe from the primordials. I never admitted that, but that was the underlining of my deal. 
So you want to change the world? Vado scoffed, realizing where I was going with the conversation. Most of the changes in human history are thanks to you, and your chaos, I shot back, surprising the chaotic spirit. Chaos brings change, harmony brings stagnation. But chaos also brings destruction, and death Vado added with a smile. Yes, I nodded, but a short life of change is better than a long one of nothing, so answer my question, what is harmony to you, outside Rava? A meaningless concept, that even with Rava ruling, humans can't achieve Vado answered with a tired tone, what are you planning this time? Well, for starters, I was planning on changing the world, by stirring up the events as I know them, by getting rid of a few players, I smirked at the spirit. Your original plan coming here was to kill the Fire Lord, and then go back to training but that's not all anymore is it? Vado said, with clear amusement. Killing Oze at this point it's more of a personal thing, he isn't much of a goal or a challenge anymore. I inwardly shrugged, what I really want, like I said before, is to drastically change the world I live in. My goal? To make it more interesting. Chaos and harmony. I see now why you asked, you just wanted to clarify, and realize you just don't give a fuck anymore. Ha 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 very well, I will support this endeavor Akira, start an era of chaos in your own way, this helps me either way. Rava won't stay quiet if we interfere too much with moral affairs, so be sure to interfere a lot, and kick her ass every time she tries to get in our way. Well, that sounds like a plan, I chuckled. Comment. 68 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 70, Chapter 70. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. HTTPS colon slash slash discord dot gg slash 847423b join the discord server if you want oh whoa. Love ya? After my talk with Vado, I went back to the house, to see what Ajala wanted to do. She apparently had the idea of introducing me to her father, so that we could go on a mission together, that, of course, wasn't the case, she didn't need to introduce me to anyone for me to go with her, but she wanted to, in her own crazy way she was trying to set a public claim on me so that other girls would stay away from me if her fame didn't push them away beforehand. Seeing this was my chance to personally measure Ose on a scale of how weak he was compared to me, I accepted, it would be fun to see the one responsible for the world as it is, this, of course, was a double-edged weapon kind of thing for me, as I was right now, I wasn't going to kneel or show any submission to him, I didn't want to, and even if I did, Vado would go crazy inside of me flipping a metaphorical table inside my head. And this was all thanks to Ajala, after that fucking kiss the falsehoods I had been feeding me about playing the long game were broken the moment, everything felt down like a house of cards the moment I allowed myself to feel something so real, now, I didn't care anymore for the plan, but, I did care for Ajala. My feeling for her or how strong they were didn't make sense. I knew this was going to bring me more problems than anything else I had done in my life before, but I just didn't care. The worst part was, I knew I didn't love her, I liked her, but love was such a strong word, what I was feeling was more animalistic than anything, like a sense of possession, the moment I kissed her or rather she kissed me, I just felt she was mine. Was I going to fall in love with her? Well, a few years ago I would have said no and laugh, but after all the shit I've been through in the span of almost a decade. I can say for certain, I have no fucking clue what the future has in store for me. Then again, I have never loved anyone in the romantic sense before, so perhaps this was love. But regardless of the exact definition of my feelings for Ajala, I had to thread carefully with the Fire Lord. One word from him and Ajala would turn on me, like a hellhound. I needed to sink my fangs deeper into her core, for one day, she would have to betray her father for me. The palace is right ahead. Ajala commented pointing to the palace, with a sense of pride so strong it surprised me a bit. This should be fun, I commented. Ajala looked at me, and with a smile said, it should, but please don't insult my father, I have my reasons to forgive our first encounter, father, on the other hand, does not. So try to avoid getting him mad, I finally have a boyfriend and I would like to keep him alive if possible. Adorable, I chuckled, don't worry, I'll behave or kill him if he tries to mess with me, either way, works for me. Good, Ajala sighed, her emotions flaring with relief, I knew this was important for her, I could feel it. The area immediately surrounding the royal palace was very dull, 
fully covered in rocks and completely devoid of any form of plant life. For someone this would show a lack of concern for decoration in the royal, but this was actually a very smart move on their part, for this terrain made stealthy infiltration nearly impossible, for any guard would be able to see you, miles before you entered the palace. As the carriage took us inside the castle, I took in detail the wall encircling the estate that separated the palace from the rest of the city, with guards in every single corner, a few hundred by what I could feel, and I knew there were more, but unfortunately my water and seismic sense were not enough to get an exact number, for the terrain was too vast for me to cover, but it did give me a general idea of what to expect for when I kill Oze. Now, after all this, I expected a very impressive palace, after all, the Fire Nation architecture has always surprised me, compared to the other cultures around, but in the end, it didn't. After all that built up, the palace itself is was a single and very dull structure, that had some charm to it, but not enough to be worthy of being a palace, the place was literally a freaking tower with three distinct wings in it, being considerably smaller than the Earth Kingdom Palace. Taking a deep breath, after the very underwhelming feeling of what this building was, I focused my senses on the larger wing of the tower, yes, I refuse to call this a palace, when even the water tribe has something better, anywho, after focusing a bit, I noticed a very dark chi emanating from the palace, which surprised me, a lot. Not because something dark was in whatever that wing was, but because, before today, like right now, I had never felt someone's emotions. Or in this case chi before. Perhaps I was going crazy, it's always a possibility. You are not, the only reason you felt whoever it was in that room, was because his feelings were dark enough to warrant you to feel them. Vado chuckled, this is getting delightfully interesting dash. Well, if what I felt was someone's feelings, and they are this dark, they can only come from someone. Oze, I inwardly sighed at the thought, if I could feel his feelings from here, in close person, that guy would put me in a mood. Oh, so that's your future in law dash Vado laughed, I can't wait to see this, perhaps you will call him dad, dash. Vado, if I have to kiss Aang to shut you up I will. You wouldn't dare. Comment. 71 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 71, Chapter 71. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. https colon slash slash discord.gg slash 847423b join the discord server if you want oh whoa. Love ya? And just like I had originally deduced the one that was emanating such a corrupted, repulsive, vomit provoking array of emotions was Oze, his mere presence had me at edge. It was like poison to me. It hurt both physically and emotionally to be near such a disgusting excuse for a human being. Ironically like fire he was burning me from the inside out. But this, agonizing meeting had proven something. I was mentally stronger than I thought, here I was sitting beside Agila, with an unyielding urge to rip him apart to end my pain. And yet he was still alive, wasting oxygen in my presence, like a worm crawling in a pile of shit. You are the one courting my daughter. Oze asked his feelings flaring with a strong sense of superiority, looking down on me as if I was a bug. Yes, I am, I nodded, trying to be as polite as I could physically be. Right now I couldn't focus too much on my manners, it was taking all my concentration to keep myself from jumping at him like a lion on its prey. I don't think he should even talk to the princess. A man I had completely failed to notice commented, and who can blame me, right now with this struggle for control it was the perfect time to try and attack me, after all, my focus was solely on Oze right now. Fortunately for me, your opinion doesn't matter. Ajala shot back. He was born and raised outside the glory of our nation? Our princess is basically dating a commoner my lord. The man kneeled in front of Oze. I bet he doesn't even has a decent education or training. I could always rip you apart. That way you can personally see how good of a bender am I. I growled. If this idiot wanted to be my lighting rod in more than one way, I would be more than happy to oblige. In fact I was fucking elated. Are you challenging him? Oze inquired, his emotions showing he was delighted. Let them fight father, it would be a show to behold. Ajala smirked, happy with how things were going right now, an Agni Kai to prove himself worthy of courting me. If I have to kill an idiot to prove this decision it's remarkably wrong then, so be it, the soon-to-be coal man, stated. I will enjoy breaking your bravado, I said with a cold tone. I am one of the generals of this powerful nation. The only thing you will do it's waste my time, the piece of coal commented, 
feeling confident behind his words. So be it, Oze stated, excited at the idea of seeing bloodshed. You two will fight for your honor in an hour. It's so sad really, Ajal aside, to think we will have to replace a general in times of war. Her words filled with excitement, but oh well, you win some, you lose some. As you wish, my lord, the corpse bowed ignoring Ajala, as he turned around, trying to shove past me, but I stood my ground and in turn it was the idiot who fell into the ground. The only one that can push me, in all heaven and earth, it's me, I stated with a cold tone, bowing to the trash named Oze, before leaving the room. Immediately after leaving the throne room, I waited for Ajala outside, where she congratulated me with a very passionate kiss, father doesn't hate you, and now all you have to do to win his approval is squash that insolent bug who tried to separate us, and considering you defeated me, well, this will be easy. I chuckled, it will. Now, let's get you ready for this little show. Ajala chuckled, oh and be a dear and make him scream. After Ajala gave me some traditional clothes that were normally used for the noble Agni Kais that she for some reason had on my size, which reminded me that I had to talk to her about that later, like how the fuck did she know I was going to fight an Agni Kai, and more importantly how in the extra fuck did she know my exact measurements to the letter, I didn't know my measurements? Anyway, after Ajala gave me the clothes I needed to wipe the floor with the general, I waited at the designated location, until the Fire Lord and some nobles came. Let's do it. I sighed, shedding the traditional shoulder garment as I turned around to face the general. Very well, though to be frankly I thought you'd run away. The general said, thinking to destabilize me with weak-ass trash talk, as if a few sharp words would do anything to me. Perhaps I should make an example of your family after this, he said, smiling. Well, I had to give the man a prize, he had touched my buttons there by threatening Sakura, meaning the desired effect was reached. I had been destabilized by his words, but there's one thing you don't do, you don't fuck with someone crazy enough to date someone on the royal fire family. As soon as the words left his rotten mouth, my thoughts turned to Sakura, and immediately my anger surged, filling me with energy that soon bursted into wild flames around me. Good, commented Ajala with a grin, pleased with the development. Surrounded by flames that could rival the sun itself, I blasted at the idiot, and shaking with anger I stopped just in front of him observing his eyes seeing them shaking with unadulterated fear, hinting he was starting to regret his decision, and not only that but I could feel he wanted to surrender with my empathic sense, but as he tried to muster the strength to do so, I simply glared at the terrified general, and slowly pulled back my left fist, preparing to attack. Begone, bringing my fist forth, I blasted off the man from hip to head incinerating his upper body before he even had the chance to fully reconsider his life choices. I win. I said walking off the stage, leaving a very frightened audience, a very intrigued Fire Lord, and a very, very happy Ajala. Comment. 69 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 72. Chapter 72. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer https colon slash slash discord dot gg slash 847423b join the discord server if you want oh whoa. love ya 4 with my victory came the approval of oze which meant for now i was allowed to court ajala which meant now i had to focus on breaking her attachments to him for as long as oze remained on her life i would not be able to kill him without breaking her in a way so i had to be careful for now at least considering how weak their relationship was it would be easy to break their outstandingly toxic relationship, and when that day came, Oze would fall to my feet. It wasn't anymore because killing him would save the people you cared about, at this point I just wanted to kill him for the sole fact his presence was like a knife on my stomach, his emotions were poison to me. It was incredible the amount of pain his mere presence was able to put on me, being until now the worst thing I had felt in both lives, it was as if my body was breaking apart over and over again and not killing him made it only worse. So, will you come with me to the Earth Kingdom? Ajala inquired, showing difficulty with the fact she was asking, instead of ordering me. It was cute seeing her trying to be polite, when she was hardwired to be bossy. Sure, I don't mind, I nodded, taking a deep breath. Very well, Ajala smiled, together we will capture the Avatar, and end this once and for all. The Fire Princess declared with total confidence in her words. 3. We will. No we won't, at least I won't help with that. 4. 
With a sigh, I started to silently meditate on our way back to the city as I let the sound of the wheels crashing with the rocks of the road calm my mind, letting everything around me fade. I don't care if you like the girl, you have to kill that man, Vado demanded as soon as I entered my inner world. I thought you said and I quote, This will be fun, so why the sudden change? I inquired. We are one you simpleton, the pain you felt I felt it. I do not want to experience such pain just for the possibility of you getting some action, Vado shouted in anger. 11. Too bad I'm the one that takes the decisions here, I replied with a chuckle, but don't worry, he will die soon, in a month or so, if everything goes according to plan. 5. Vado sighed, as if weighing his options, what is your plan then? Well, I plan to make Ajala see there are things that are more important than power and control, I answered. Vado groaned at that. Please don't say love. 17. As corny as it sounds, yes. Ajala craves that. Oze sees her as a tool, her mother saw her as a monster, and so did the rest of her family. I knew it was corny, but it was true, if I showed Ajala some love, she might get better. 3. Very well but be warned Akira, if your plan doesn't work I will kill Oze. I might not be able to control your body for more than a few seconds. But rest assured all I need is a few seconds to end his pitiful existence, Vado said in a dangerously low tone, shocking me, since when he was able to control my body, that shit was new, are we clear? 6. Crystal, I sighed, as one new problem added itself to the mix, now the chaotic spirit of darkness had the power to control me, granted it was just for a few seconds but still, the thought of that occurring was very terrifying. 6. Back at the mansion, I went to Sakura and started to tell her about my plans, well, not all of them, but the ones she had to know, like the fact I was going to the Earth Kingdom with Ajala to capture the Avatar. At first Sakura was not sure it was a good idea to do so, but after analyzing the political points this would win me, she went from saying it was a bad idea to encouraging me to do it. Her logic was pretty sound, showing her good grasp of war politics, after all, the more time I used on helping the Fire Nation with their military endeavors, the more supporters I would get, which in the end would put me on the throne. What Sakura didn't know was that I didn't care about that shit anymore. And while I wanted to share that with her, it would have to wait, for now I didn't want any more ruining my plan, and while I knew Sakura was my friend, I also knew she had priorities, and Ajala wasn't one of them. 5. So are you really going to capture the Avatar? Sakura inquired. 2. No, I chuckled, I will probably kick his ass again though, which reminds me. I need a mask to cover my face, the last thing I want if them revealing something they should not. 2. A good idea, we can't let anyone know of the full extent of your powers yet. Sakura nodded, though capturing the avatar and then showing your powers might win you some if not all the political approval you need, but that's a long shot. 5. Not only that shit was a long shot, I didn't want to kill Aang. Yes he was annoying as fuck with his pacifist mindset on a world filled with war, but that didn't warrant a desire for his demise, at much I wanted to kick his ass, but that was it. 3. Talk for yourself Vado commented inside my head. 1. Alright, there was a part of me that wanted him to die, but to be fair, Vado wanted everyone to die, so he didn't count on my decision, I will try winning the political favor in another way, I chuckled. Fair enough, Sakura nod, when are you leaving? I have no idea. I wasn't paying attention to Ajala on the way back. Can't anyone blame me? I knew. Oze's emotions basically kicked my metaphorical ass. 2. I'm sure she will come later to remind you. Sakura chuckled. 2. Comment. 51 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 73. Chapter 73. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer. https colon slash slash discord.gg slash 847423b Join the Discord server if you want oh whoa. Love ya? 1. It took us two weeks to get to be a sing essie. From our seats I could hear the Fire Nation Tundra tanks rumbling across the rugged terrain toward the outer wall of be a sing essie and with this I knew where I was canonically speaking, if the the enormous fire nation drill Ajala had commissioned was anything to go by, and I had to admit the drill was a masterpiece, that I doubted many benders could stop, the massive drill was a statement of the fire nation power, leaving a trail of despair as it, released steam from its pipes and metal spikes lodge into the surrounding land. 4. 
inside the Fire Nation Drills Control Room, where my, Ty Lee, Ajala, and myself, were currently seated around what Ajala calls the commanding table. We were discussing about the plan to take the city as soon as possible, alongside one of the war ministers of the Fire Nation. As the conversation kept on stretching I started to question my life choices. Being part of the military was boring as heck. Then again least I wasn't suffering like the poor Fire Nation soldiers operating the machine. Their job was beyond mind-numbing. With how boring everything was I couldn't help but let my mind wander to the deepest and most stupid corners of my concises where I wondered if the mask I had bought would suffice to hide my identity from the gong. It wasn't as flashy as the one Zuko used when he played the role of the Blue Spirit, but it should suffice. I kinda took inspiration from the Umbu masks in Naruto when I ordered the mask, so in theory it should work. 15. Though, considering how stupid the gong is, I doubt I will have any problems whatsoever. 9. This drill will bring B.A. Singh S.E. to its knees? Nothing can't stop it. War Minister Chin boasted, once again for the millionth time about the drill's magnificent power and its capability of breaching the walls of B.A. Singh S.E., if the guy knew how close I was to make him mute, he would shut the fuck up about the drill. 5. Will the earthbenders be able to stop the drill or slow us down? Ty Lee questioned, her emotions flaring with boredom, like me. To which Jean simply replied by stating that the drill's metal shell was impervious to any earthbending attack, once again boasting about the fucking drill. Not that I don't love hearing you talk about the drill, but if you keep on jacking the drill I swear to God I will do something that I will not regret. And who do you think you are? The war minister inquired angrily. 1. But before I had the chance to answer his stupid question, Ajala beat me to the point and said, someone with enough authority to burn you alive without any repercussions. 1. I looked at Ajala and chuckled, you heard the princess, minister, now get to the point. The minister visibly blanked, and with a terrified expression said, well, in summary it's strong enough to resist any attack, from the outside that is. Well, it's time to get ready, Ajala said, with a wickedly delicious smile, Akira, and I will lead this invasion, as for the rest, don't disappoint us. Finally something to do, Mai said, the one emotion girl as I inwardly called her, bored, she was never mad or anything just bored. E. Tylee giggled, I always wanted to fight against the famous terror team of B.A. Singh S.E., can I do it Ajala, can I, can I, please? Ajala sighed, fine, just don't lose. I don't have losers on my team. Dear Ajala, you lost to me, therefore you are a loser in a way. 18. While I followed Ajala, I kept tabs on everyone around me, especially my team. Tylee, for one, had immediately rushed to fight the Terra team, and by the looks of it they were pretty weak, she took care of them in the span of a few minutes. 1. My, well, she was doing the bare minimum, nothing more nothing less, fighting the earthbenders only if they directly attacked her. Things as of now were pretty dull, but soon they would get interesting. Thanks to my heightened bending senses I felt Team Aang approaching the drill, meaning I would soon get to fight Aang again. But then again considering how weak he was as of now, that wasn't much of a challenge or something fun, more like beating a child with a bat, said child being quadriplegic. But perhaps seeing Ajala fight him would sure be entertaining enough. 8. If the Avatar comes I will let you fight him, I informed Ajala. Why? Ajala inquired, with curiosity. Well, I want to see my girlfriend, kicking his ass, that wasn't a lie, more like a half-true, I didn't want to fight Aang for two reasons. One if I did fight him it would end with me capturing his ass, and two, well, like I said a quadriplegic kid. Two, I see, Ajala chuckled, then it will be my pleasure. If anyone else interferes I will take care of it, I added. There is no need, Ajala shook her head, with a smile, you want to see me defeat them and destroy their hope? Then I will do it alone to show you just how strong I am. Blue hot swirling fire lighted on her hand for dramatic purposes. Two, very well. I chuckled at the adorable display. By the way, I still don't understand why you want to use a mask. Ajala inquired. I hummed at that trying to formulate a valid answer. Style preferences. 12. Hmm. Fair enough, Ajala nodded, accepting my answer. 6. Meanwhile I could feel Team Aang getting ready to clash with us, and while the image I was getting from them was at best blurry, it was more enough to know what they were planning. Unfortunately for them their plan was destined to fail. 1. Comment. 52 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 74. Chapter 74.
If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer https colon slash slash discord dot gg slash 847423b join the discord server if you want oh whoa love ya sorry for the delay the auto post didn't work as the drill imminently approached the walls of ba sing se i patiently waited for team aang to arrive deciding to see things from a different perspective i left Angela alone as i walked around the surface of the drill my destination being where aang was i just couldn't wait another half an hour Running towards his location, I sighed finding Aang who was wasting his time on a futile attempt to weaken the metal surface of the drill with his astoundingly weak water bending, while this was possible his strength with the element was mediocre at best, and would never cut such a thick layer of metal, at least not before the drill had fulfilled its purpose. What I'd give to be a metal bender. Aang sighed as I rolled my eyes if he wanted to be a mental bender all he had to do was train but considering he is so clueless that he had yet to notice a masked man standing right behind him I say he won't ever achieve that, not that it matters. As I studied Aang and his movement wondering when would he notice I was behind him, I decided to give him a little shock, but that would have to wait. Ajala was coming and announcing her presence Momo suddenly shrieked in fear, causing Aang to turn to turn around and catch me and the sight of a blue fire blast coming toward him. Yo, I waved at him, jumping out of the way, I literally spent five minutes behind him. That is remarkably sad, Ajala commented, getting into her battle stance. Now, stay back and enjoy the show, she added with a smile. Aang during this exchange sent Momo away to avoid the poor critter getting caught in the crossfire, taking a deep breath Aang go into position preparing to duel Ajala and me, adorable, as of now, he will barely make her sweat, and he thinks he can take two at the same time. She will be your opponent, I have no interest in fighting you. I stated, as I walked behind Ajala, burn him good, I whispered to her ear. Delighted, Ajala smirked, jumping at him. With a smile, I sat back, as I got ready to enjoy the show. Quick on her feet Ajala started to shoot several blue fireballs at him, leaving him no chance to counterattack, all of which Aang managed to avoid showing his immense prowess when it comes to dodging if only Gohan from TFT learned that. Aang however, is not letting Ajala completely dominate him and with a quick swing blasts a gust of air her way, which Ajala dodges by jumping over it, continuing her fireball assault, but Aang uses switches his bending using water whips to deter Ajala's blasts. This while flashy is a waste of time, I know for a fact Ajala can end this, but she's purposely delaying his defeat. Your water bending sure is bad, I chuckled, making Ajala smile. It sure is, but oh well, this just makes things easier for me, Ajala winked at me kicking Aang to the wall while sending two fire blasts at him. Aang in shock attempted to deflect the blast conjuring a water shield, however, the idiot seemed to forget water evaporates, and it's not a good element to block fire if you don't have large amounts of it, so as a result he is sent back to the wall, crashing against it once again. This is highly entertaining Dashvato commented, and I could feel he was happy, or less angry which is technically the same for him. As their battle continues, Several boulders are hurtled downward getting in the way of their fight, and frankly that can't do, so with a smile, I decided to make things more interesting, for me, of course, considering their battle would end in about a minute or so, with the factors being mud behind the wall and the soldiers that had infiltrated the drill I wanted to spice things up a bit, making their duel a bit more risque, so with that in my head, I secretly started to earthbend them with my mind to make things more interesting by slightly changing their trajectory to force Aang out of the wall. I wanted to force Aang into the offensive, so I pushed him with the boulders off the wall, forcing him to create an earth wall to avoid Ajala's upcoming blast. Taking the wall as a cover, Aang started to repeatedly attack her with all the elements but fire, pushing Ajala back as she struggled to dodge the boulders and his attacks coming her way. Taking a deep breath I changed my focus to the boulders. Now changing their trajectory off Ajala's path, as to not give the avatar any more help. This gives Ajala the opening she was looking for, and with a powerful fire blast destroys his defense as she proceeds to charge a lighting attack at him, but before she finishes doing so, a small part of the alls of B.A. Sing S.E. collapse, and Aang is swept off the drill by a tsunami of mud. Jumping out of my position, I grabbed Ajala by the waist stopping her from having the same destiny Aang had suffered, that was incredible but it seems luck was on his side. Not good enough, Ajala sighed, I didn't manage to kill him. Let's be honest, you played with him like a cat with a mouse, 
that much was true, Ajla had much more to offer in a fight, but she enjoyed toying with her opponents, which by the way, I approve. To be expected of my boyfriend, to see behind me so easily, Ajla chuckled, I do enjoy a good mouse chase, you can ask Suko or Mai, or Tai Lee, or everyone in your school I suppose. All right now what? The drill is toasted, I asked Ajla as I ran with her in my arms, any ideas? For now, Ajla chuckled, for now let them enjoy this empty victory. Comment. 34 comments. Vote. 1 left. Chapter 75, Chapter 75. If you want to read ahead or read other novels on the work go and check https slash slash www.patreon.com slash cornbringer https colon slash slash discord dot gg slash 847423b join the discord server if you want oh whoa love ya after the drill incident we regrouped in a fire nation base nearby ba sing se and while Ajala talked with the local soldiers giving them orders about what to do now, I was figuring what to do about my relationship with Ajala and how to make it progress, I had at most one month to change the way she saw me, I knew she liked me, but realistically it wasn't love, it was an infatuation at the moment, so I had to change that. Because I knew for a fact next time I saw Oze I would kill him. So I had to act fast, maybe have more dates with her, or more flirting. I really didn't know what to do. There wasn't anything I could do to make someone fall in love with me in less than a month, so I just had to to try. Ajalea Tai Lee waved at her, as she approached us. As she approached us, I noticed she was specifically walking directly towards me, and before I could ask her what she wanted, I felt a surge of pure desire coming from Ajala, and the next thing I know my lips were locked in a sensual kiss, fueled with something almost primal. She kissed me like she wanted to steal my lips away forever, like nothing else mattered. The kiss was soft and moist, but also hot and breathy. This time she wasn't trying to win anything, but seeking union and closeness and the sharing of one breath, one sensation, one timeless and passionate moment, that swallowed my very soul for a brief yet infinite moment. I could feel her every emotion coursing through her body, and I couldn't help but marvel at her beautifully flustered expression as the heat of the moment colored her face tinting her cheeks of an innocent yet lustful pink as her tongue touched the deepest corners of my mouth making our connection quick, electric, and delicious, with the movements of her tongue becoming firmer and more determined. That was so hot, Tylee giggled. I concur, I chuckled as Ajala she broke the kiss. I can get used to this, Ajala smirked, sitting on my lap. Unable to restrain myself at the sight of her body atop mine, I pushed myself against her, as if to avoid her escape, and began to kiss her softly, tasting her lips, savoring her lipstick and little by little the intensity of the kiss grew, it became more rough, more needy, more savage. Get a room, my muttered, feeling angry and jealous, well that was new, Ms. Boredom was angry. You can't blame her for Zuko, Tylee whispered to her friend, and now it was clear why she was angry, seeing us like this made her feel angry with the world. Well, fuck her. I don't care if the other fire princess is not here to kiss her, I will enjoy my time with Ajala because should I fail in winning her heart things will end. For the remaining of the week I trained with Ajala, with most of the training being me copying her movements and adapting them to fit my own style, little by little I could feel my fire becoming sharper, more lethal, and stronger. As I uncovered the secret behind her blue fire, blue fire sacrifices quantity over quality, by compressing the largest amount of flames possible on a single focal point maximizing the power output of the flames by several folds, this I had noticed after studying her very closely and thanks to that I had managed to master the secret behind the strongest flames of all. But I didn't stop at that, having blue flames was just step one, so I kept on training. If I could only train one of my elements I would at least master said fucking element. So immediately after mastering the art behind the incredibly deadly blue flames, I turned my entire focus on training my lightning bending. I wanted to be able to use it without having to do the fucking fusion dance. This of course was harder than it sounded, because this technique was 90% dependent of how well the user was able to bend and manipulate their chi, but this wasn't the hard part, the hard part was training with it. See, lightning bending it's very taxing, a single lighting takes a lot of chi, now using multiple lightings tires the fuck out of everyone, now for me this was not entirely the case, since to Vado my chi reserves were massive. But even then after 12 hours of non-stop lightning bending I would find myself on the ground at the verge of passing out. I don't know why are you tiring yourself this much, Ajala commented, 
as she helped my tired body back to the camp. Perfection takes time, I winked at her. Agila rolled her eyes, I suppose. Ang POV, for some reason I still had to understand. I couldn't shake my mind off the masked men that watched me and Agila fight, feeling a chilling sense of deja vu as if I had seen him before, but the part I didn't understand was that my body my entire being cried in fear, I wanted to run away the moment I saw him, and he didn't do anything to warrant such a reaction from me, he barely talked to me during the fight. Alright, so now we are three against four, Tove commented, I think I can take two at the same time. Tove, it's now four against four. Saka stated with a frown. Oh yeah, you. Tove chuckled. For the love of. I can still fight. Saka shouted. Meh, Tove rolled her eyes. Whoever that man was, we have to be careful, Katara aside, as we know, Ajala is surrounded of dangerous people, so if short he must be skilled at something for him to be on that group. Well, he did seem agile, I commented. Comment. 57 comments. Vote. One left.